Hi, and we're live at the 24th Woodstock Film Festival here in Woodstock. And we're going to kick today's uh, podcast off with Ben Eckersley and Stanford Jenkins. I'm your host, Katie Mejia. So how's it been so far, the festival? How's it, how has the experience been? You seen any cool films? Uh, we got in last night, so we went to a party. Was, I heard about that party. Yeah, which was all right. Um, and we had a filmmaker brunch this morning, which was... Um, which is good too. Saw a lot of our mentors. Yeah, so they're part of the Woodstock Film Residency 2023 yeah. program, and you guys worked on your films yep. for one month at White Feather Farm, and you were mentored by Alex Smith. He was on the podcast yesterday, yeah. and uh, several other folks. Yeah, Iris Sachs, Peter Hedges. And you can sit up so we can hear you a little bit. Lydia yeah. Dean Pilcher. Uh, those are key mentors. A bunch of people popped in though. Yeah. Well, we should also mention Sabine Hoffman. Sabine Hoffman, yeah. She's one of the other lead oh, mentors. We love Sabine. Filmmaker. Yeah. Um, so where are you guys at on your films? I know you said you don't quite know what your film is about anymore. Your film is called yeah. Joy and Pain and you're still yeah. working I mean, out. You want to start? A lot of sort of navigated, uh, sort of shifted over the summer. Um, since the, the, the primary premise of the film deals with the uh, death of a parent and the birth of a first child, a young couple in the Bay Area navigating those situations. And uh, this summer, it became kind of real to me in a lot of ways. So I've been thinking through the material a lot and sort of what matters most and what it all means. And it's been fun, you know, but also it's a sort of a lot to sort of grasp and see. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what comes of it. Yeah, congratulations on the birth of your daughter. Yeah. That is no small feat, changes your life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and it's incredible because when you're a filmmaker and you have kids, it's off the chart. I mean, uh, it's really intense. Yeah. And the fact that you have that element flowing through your project is, of course, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. But I know Ben, yeah, ben. ben may be in a different place. Yeah, yeah, definitely in a different place. Um, spent summer working more on the film, taking a slight pivot uh, to a project that's kind of the same concerns, maybe a little closer to home. Uh, and still about climate and trying to do that in a funny way. So, I, you know, when we were up here, there was these forest fires that came all the way to the East Coast, and that has definitely influenced this, this new project. Yeah, I'm now, doing. unfortunately, if you look at any footage on of Brooklyn, it's underwater, right. which is wholly insane. We're here at the Woodstock Film Festival watching all these amazing films, and someone, you know, hands me the or Instagram and they're showing me the streets of Brooklyn where I used to live for 15 years. And I was like, thank God I don't live there anymore. Well, no, I'm just kidding. But I feel bad for I mean, it's it's crazy. It's real. How did that yeah, even happen? Yeah. El Nino plus climate change. Yeah. Yeah. But then when we were when we were filming together. That forest fires from Canada. Yeah, and no like one, one ever explained ever what that was. All did right. anybody give you any information as to what happened with those fires? I think it was just. It was so much smoke from British Columbia and the wind just passing all the way to the east coast. Right, right. But Sanford wasn't even wild. phased by it. Yeah, because being, being living in the Bay Area. He lives in the Bay Area and it's on yeah. and it's perpetually on fire. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, people are messing with the weather, you know, there's a lot of things happening. So people want to be able to control nature so that it benefits us energy wise, so that we either, you know, we can one sort of get off fossil fuels, but at the same time, it's like there's people that are like, you know, wanting to block the sun's energy. But then how does solar panels work? You know, I mean, so we're in a really tricky time trying to understand what we're doing. But nature is always she's always, you know, going to have the upper hand. I mean, we, we can control it to some degree. But at the end of the day, it's it's Mother Nature and we're we're just mere humans on yeah. this planet. It rained overnight, but the, the air feels good today. It does. Yeah. It smells great outside. Oh, when you live up here, boy, you're like lungs just expand. Yeah, it's beautiful up here. So we're at the Woodstock Film Festival, and today we have a bunch of films. You guys have anything on your list that you want to check out? Because you had your you had your residency dinner this morning. You guys got to get together well, and we hang out. Give a shout out to Unseen. Yes, Set Hernandez. Set Hernandez. Yeah. A previous resident, yep. further along the process, and that's playing today at three thirty. Are you guys gonna go to that? We are. We're gonna go to do that. it, and so it's at Tinker Street, right? Yep. Okay. And it's also on Sunday. Yep, it's on Sunday as it's on well. Sunday too. So yeah, we would love to have Set on the, you know, podcast, and 
he hasn't come through here yet. We're in the f filmmakers lounge here at the Woodstock Film Festival where filmmakers can come in. We do round tables at 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, we had an amazing round table this morning and it's every morning at 9 a.m. And then filmmakers can take pictures. They can come join us on the podcast. They can take some clips, you know, and so we're just back here really connecting. We just, Sean Lennon was just here. We were vibing mm -hmm. with him. He's so down to earth and sweet with his film called Wars Over uh animated film utilizing the, the famous song and then the zombies were here as well and they were super sweet and fun um and so yeah there's just a lot of cool people here that are just like not pretentious and have really good vibes yeah. you know what i mean because compared to some film festivals i mean everybody every place is different you know yeah but, and they all serve their purpose you know yeah but have you guys ever been to i mean any other film festivals recently or how can you Compared to Woodstock, well, living in San Francisco, yeah, the film is there, yeah. So, you know, that while well, living in Oakland, none of the artists can afford to live in San Francisco anymore. I was but, gonna say, um, but as a film is you know, the regional fest in, in my town, um, but I mean, I do like the ability to walk outside Woodstock and just kind of take in the, the, the space as well as the films, and I'm not having to sort of navigate you know, a kind of contrived temporary setup, you know, that just disappears when, when the festival is over and most of the people still live here, you know, and, um, you know, I can go into the, the same coffee shops if I came back, you know, three months from now and still feel the energy of this town. So I think I, like tell you, right, was like that for me when I went as a student, um, there was very little press. There were just people who were into movies. And uh, it was secluded enough for only people who really wanted to be there. To it's kind of similar to this. Yeah, so ways, that was yeah. cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Tell you right. Okay, I'm going to look out for that one. Yeah. What about you, Ben? Are you a film festival person or you just yeah. got involved in Woodstock? Yeah, no, um, not too many, but uh, definitely uh, living in New York, uh, they can be a lot more pretentious than this. And um, right. you could just feel like, another body in the crowd so yeah. it's really nice to be here uh, just feel welcome feel you know it's interesting to talk to everybody um there's no hierarchy so yeah i'm very grateful for that. 100 you said it you said it perfectly there isn't like a sort of top down there's the boss there's harvey weinstein over there oh my god you know it's like it's, it's like president right <laughs> it's just <laughs> Vera. Yeah. And this queen is our, Vera. this is your first time here too, yeah right? yeah, this, yeah this is my first time our first time at the actual yeah. festival oh yeah too, so it's great well welcome to be here well you guys experience. get out there go see go see sets film and i really appreciate you guys yes being on the podcast yes. and again you're welcome to come on the the podcast podcast that's not the live stream that you know we do 30 minute 25 minute podcast sessions with a lot of different filmmakers and it's on spotify now Mm -hmm. and apple podcast so at any time you guys are welcome both of y'all awesome. yeah. well, come join me to see you. yeah you too so. i hope i get to see you at a film too yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely me take too. care okay all right thanks guys so that was ben and sanford they were they're filmmakers and they were part of the the woodstock film residency um so we are a nonprofit 501c3 and we support filmmakers emerging filmmakers and our next special guest it's Jane Weinstock, and her film is Three Birthdays. Welcome, Jane. It's a little tight back here. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Is it nice still raining out there? Yeah, I'm Katie. It's, I'm Jane. Jane, so nice to meet that. you. Yes. And this is Andrea. Andrea, thank you for joining Andrea us. For Producer of Three Birthdays. Welcome, welcome. Yes. So let's get into it. Um, you know, we are, this is our 24th year of the festival. Have you guys ever been here before? No. I had a film here. Tell me about that. Uh, the film was called uh, The New Public. It was a documentary about a startup small school in Bed-Stuy. Lovely. Cool. So this being a feature film, is this, is this, are you, is this your first feature film that you worked on or were you shorts? Tell me a little bit about yourself and give us a little bit of a background. Uh, no, this is not my first feature film. Uh, my background is New York indie producer looking for just brilliant people like to Jane. work with, like Jane, <laughs> and wonderful material. Um, 
perfect I love history. history history buff well Jane give us a little bit of background and tell us about yourself and then we'll get into three birthdays okay well I actually have been to Woodstock I came here when I was 10 my parents came for the summer to take art classes um, so we uh, we lived in two different houses and that's the last time I was in Woodstock well welcome back and what do you think of it now has it changed yeah, there are more shops. There are a lot of shops, and everyone loves the candle shop in Woodstock. I haven't been there yet. Why does it's like this? Everyone just goes and me. It's either like they just go to the candle shop. It's it's just the funniest thing, and the hat shop. Candles and hats. Really? I didn't know you were a hat wearer. So. Them. I just buy them. Yeah, you don't. You just buy them and have a have like a you just have a selection of hats, but you and you try to wear them. I actually had a hat on yesterday, and it was like, wow, I wish I. Could. But hats are that's not an easy thing to pull off. You have great glasses too. Thank you. you guys have the great glasses. So let's get into three birthdays. Um, tell us about it. Like, what's the inspiration for the film? The inspiration is it takes place during the sexual revolution in 1970, the height of the sexual revolution and also the height of feminism, the black power movement, the anti-war movement. So there was a lot going on. Uh, so I thought it was a very exciting time for me and I wanted to make a film about it. And so how did it come together? How did the film, like, how did you get, you have an idea for a film and then you find your team and then you tell us like how this project came together for you. Um, well, I wrote the film. I work, I, I uh, did the story with a friend of mine, Nevin Schreiner, who's a wonderful writer. And we developed the story together. And then I went away and wrote it. And after I had written a number of drafts, I sent it to Andrea, who I had met at a dinner party, um, thinking, well, I don't know, maybe she'd be interested in producing it, or maybe she would know someone who would be interested in producing it. And indeed, she was interested. So Andrea's brother, who lived next door to Nevin Schreiner. <laughs> wow. Yes, it all so comes together. Family. Fantastic. So tell us about it coming to Woodstock. So what is the process? So do you, did you submit through Film Freeway or is it a relationship with Mirror? Like I'm always interested how films get into the festival. We, we did submit through Film Freeway, but I will say this, our film takes place in 1970 and we could think of no town that embodies right. more right. Right. Jane's right. Right. Interests, the things that moved her to write the story than this town, the peace signs everywhere, the the candles, as you say, the, the, the sort of legacy of a certain kind of freedom and uh, music. Creativity. Really, yeah, art. creativity, yeah. art, yes. Yeah, so the film itself is screening. Tell us about when it's screening and where we can see it. It's screening at 1045 in... Socrates. Upstate Films Theater in Socrates. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it's that's on Saturday. And then on Sunday, it's at 1245 at the cinema right down the street. Mm -hmm. which is Tinker what, Street. The Tinker Street Cinema. Yeah. Great. So you guys are going to be there for the Q&As. We will. We Perfect. Will. And the film itself, tell us who's in the film and a little bit more about it. How did you get your cast? I mean, how did you get the actors? How did you decide, you know that this was going to be the right person to, to, you know, to, I mean, I'm always interested in that part. Do you, you worked with the casting director? Yes. And who, and how did that happen? Worked with a great casting director named Betsy Fippinger. And this was sort of during COVID. So I never met anybody. I, it was all done on Zoom. Yeah. Um, but people uh, taped for us and I had meetings with people and it, the cast came together beautifully. It turned out that Josh, Josh Radner and Annie Paris, two of the leads, or three leads, um, knew each other already. Uh, so they had a so synergy. They already had oh, that's a great nice. synergy. And Nula Cleary played a 17-year-old girl, and she is uh, a great, great How old find. is she? She's, I think she's 23 now. Wow, that's tough to, yeah. to, to be able to pull that off she when was, it was believable. She was, she was great. Wow. Yeah, it's believable. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. she knew Josh. Yes, she knew Josh because when she was 13, she had gone to some kind of fan club event 
and had a selfie made with her and Josh. So on the first day, totally, yeah. On the, on the first day of rehearsal, she presented Josh with this photograph, and he was really taken. Um, beautiful. And we put the photograph on the refrigerator in the film. Oh, that's beautiful. So was it a, was it a labor of love? Was it difficult to make as are many films, or was it something that sort of you know happened in a fluid way? Was it sort of because sometimes people work on films and they take forever in between or whatever? Was it was it an easy process or was it very difficult? Well, it took a long time to get it off the ground, but then once we were making it, it was actually an easy, wonderful process. The, I, we had an incredible cast and crew. And everything just worked, and nobody got COVID. And where'd you shoot it? We shot in New Jersey, in Paramus and Rutherford. Wow, fantastic. Four, and that was for Ohio. Wow, that's great. So tell us, what's next after the Woodstock Film Festival with Three Birthdays? We are going to the Tallgrass Film Festival, and then the Portland Film Festival, and then um, the LA Femme uh, Festival. And then the Fort Lauderdale Festival. Fantastic. And that's what we know so far. That's great. Yeah, like you said, I think it's really interesting. When when you submit your film to festivals, it's really important to find something that kind of has like the theme. It's connected to the festival because a lot of times you just don't know. You can have a film and spend all this money. And sometimes they're like $80 to submit for like 10 different, you know, film festivals. But I love what you said about how you, you know, it's a film that was about as a period piece from the 70s. And then Woodstock is obviously known for that time period. So how did you decide that to other festivals to send them to? And how did you, you know, I mean, did those festivals have kind of like a connection to, or was it just, they just saw it and thought it was great and selected it? I think Vera's taste yeah. in films is very influential. And we have gotten invitations since being accepted ah. into this business into this film, film festival because people know that Mira's taste is really very um, special. So that, that but, uh, you no, know, thematically, we do think that some of the feminist film festivals are a good place yeah, for us. Um, but we also hope that the film plays to a broad audience and we are testing it out in different parts of the country. And that was a consideration too. Yeah, beautiful. No. Well, is your next move sort of once you do the festival run to hopefully get the distribution that you want? And you guys, how does that process happen? It's happening. We're in talks. You're in talks. <laughs> well, best of luck with that. I thank you so much for being thank on the you. podcast, thank and I hope you. to see you again. And we definitely are going to go check out your film. Three okay. birthdays. Three birthdays. Thank you. Enjoy thank the rest you. of the festival. Bye. Bye. You're so welcome. Thank you. So the next uh, guest we have is from Holland. He's part of our Dutch Film Exchange program. We're working with the Leiden Film Festival. And I'm going to totally ruin your name, but I know it's French. It's like Remy. Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah, that's great. So come sit right here. <laughs> and the, your last name, Remy <laughs> Van. Yes. Say your, yeah. say your name so I don't mess it's it up. Van Huchten. Ben Hurkton. <laughs> Great. So tell us about your film. You, mm. We were just talking about distribution with um, the filmmakers from Three Birthdays. And I know you had, a, it was called Mascot. But yeah, then it, yeah. it got bought and got distribution already. And they, they changed the name to Fortunate Son. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your film. And yeah, yeah. yeah. go ahead. It's, um, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the invite. Um, Absolutely. I'll just make this off because it... Uh, mascot uh, or fortunate son. Uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a pretty rough story. Uh, um, I um, we showed it yesterday, and people thought it was very disturbing in in, really? in a good way. In a good way. Um, it's it's about a family adrift, and and especially it's a it's kind of an investigation of uh, a teenager a teenager uh, radicalizing in all sorts of ways. Um, He's uh, he, he he yeah he grows up with his mother and his uh, his his sister, um, and he's raised very closely by his mother because um, one of the things he has a bit of a deformed mouth, teeth problem, mm -hmm. and and she always wanted to really protect him. You could say a bit overprotective, 
and uh, and and she never really you know realized that he that he grew up and um, just wants to, him to be the baby that she can yes. protect and doesn't want him yeah. to maybe yeah. you know go through the bullying or whatever from his right or, yeah. right yeah. but when when yeah but life changes and and she has to take distance from him and he totally can't deal with that and he he's a very sensitive boy and he just starts to you know radicalize in 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 in, in terms Re of rebel, rebel yeah well well even more of that mm -hmm. under even influence so. of 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 the of social media and mm -hmm. internet he does he's, he's investigating what love is or pornography mm -hmm. um, Very uh, violence mm -hmm. um um yeah and friendships and 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 it's yeah it's about a story but when when you're in when you're in a dysfunctional family how things can go really sour well you know i think it's 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 unfortunate, but I think there's a lot of people that go mm. through that. And I appreciate yeah. you making a film and, and about this. It's it must, like you said, it was hard to watch, I'm sure. But then at the end of the day, with films that are hard to watch about real things that people don't want to yeah. deal with or talk about much, which is going through that time period, you see a lot of pornography. You, you see things, these horror, you see violence, you see dysfunction. You don't have parents modeling yeah. things that you yourself, um, you know, like relationships like a like a relationship that works if you don't see someone modeling a relationship that works you you radicalize yeah, yeah. you rebel you you know start experimenting with like the worst possible drugs you know or whatever and yeah. it's it's but it's it's things that people don't want to deal with and a lot of it has to do with just you know social media and things like that and I, as a mother i can only mm. imagine this character and like how she really wanted to protect him. But then that protect that too much, you know, that actually pushes them away more, you know, and yes. that's part of the challenge. Yeah. Yes, it is. Parenting. Yeah. It's, it's, I think everything has to do with examples. And, and if you get confusing examples, um, it's, it's, yeah, you need, you need close, you need people very close, mm -hmm. especially your parents. That's, right. So what was the inspiration yeah. for the film? There were a few things. It's uh, um, we we got very hit by by a shooting. Uh, um, uh, we as in the, the scriptwriter and I uh, shooting in the Netherlands in in 2015, and uh, we were just investigating what was the background of this guy, and um, and 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 actually also because because times were changing very quickly and, and especially on social media internet. Mm -hmm. um, what, what 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 would I have? gone through if i would grow up in this age toxic era and yeah. so we put a few things from my own experience in the present days and um well you know and and um yeah change the guidance of parents and, and i've seen a lot of friends of mine lacking lacking that love the modeling too the modeling of what a love relationship looks yeah. like like i mean a lot of people didn't have it myself included it mm -hmm. was it's, it's a dysfunction where it just, your next relationships are going to look just like that. Like you're going to yeah. continue that on because that was the modeling, yeah. you know, or you'll have no relationships at all. You'll just, you'll just put a wall up and not have relationships. Well, this, this is, this is, and it's funny because we shot it during Corona and then, and then we released the movie even some time after Corona. Um, and we found that a lot of young people got, you know, isolated um oh, suicidal and uh, just... well even that you know so there, there's no there's 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 nothing that that stops them um and again i think social context and care it's it's one of the one of the themes in and all in all the movies i make uh, um i think it's most important that's Beautiful. that's uh, yeah well, so tell us we you watched we you showed it yesterday when's your next yeah. showing it's, it's sunday it's sunday yeah, morning we know we know we know we talked about that <laughs> at 10 in Sogarty. In yeah, so a little bit tricky. Um, but mm -hmm. if you can make it, make it. Um, so tell us about your other films, like how, what? Yeah. Um, and this is your first time, obviously, not to New York, right? But no. first up to yeah. Woodstock, right? yes, it is. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. your other films is, um, you know, tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. like, do you have a kind of like a theme running through all of your films? Like, or do you is this like a whole new subject that you've uh, approached? I think uh, yeah, it's it's something you discover later, and um, I do a lot of family studies. There you go. That's mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's I've I've you know I've had a, a history of of um, yeah a breakup, uh, you know parents breaking up, mm -hmm. and, and and they I've always been very lucky that 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 went really well. <laughs> um, and, so you, you're uh, saying that your parents were were divorced and it somehow was yeah, okay. Well, you didn't it, blame it on yourself it or worked, whatever. The kids. Really, How old were you? No, seven. And uh, but, but I grew up in an area with a lot of social problems, 
and I had a lot of friends. And this and was in Holland, in the south of Holland, in the, yeah. Okay, in the south. And I made it another uh, film called uh, "Son of Mine." It's, Fortunate uh, son and son of mine. Well, that's that's. <laughs> yeah. I didn't make up the, the, wow. the second one. You didn't make. But, but did you did you name this one too, or did they get changed? Actually, it was called Glück auf, uh, the the first one. And it's uh, it, what does that mean I, in it's, English? It's, uh, it's 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 get up well, like it's how about it's, it's the mining area, right? Like, uh, like you know, here blue, um, they call it blue collar, in yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's, it's it's come up luckily, come up happy, and um, and and this is this area the, the mines closed in the 70s, and this area really was was economically destroyed, mm -hmm. um, um, and it never got up again. It never recovered. And, and this yeah. was a very personal story about a father and a son where the, the son gets more uh, successful in crime <laughs> than his father. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it did really well. Uh, um, so we got to look for this one now. Tell us the name yeah. of it. They changed it's, the it's, name. It's Glukov, but, but then, you can find it on The Son of Mine. Uh -huh. And how do we find that? How do we uh, find your films? Um, well, you can watch Mascot or, or um, Fortunate, son. Fortunate Son on, on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other one is on iTunes. You can still watch mm -hmm. it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, or shoot me a message. <laughs> shoot you a message. I might do that. Yeah. It's interesting as, as like filmmakers, how do we, you know, how do we, where do we keep our films up and how we manage all of that? Yeah. You know, I think it's such an interesting yeah. time when you make indie films because, you know, you made this amazing work of art and, you know, how it do is. we make sure mm. that it's still like available because there's so many platforms, you know? And so yeah, I, and how do you find it? Yeah. And That's, then Amazon yeah. prime is, is interesting because it's so funny, but it's actually allows indie filmmakers to just have their stuff. I have my film mm. up there from yeah. 2015 too. And I went through the whole process of getting it up there and all that. And it, it, there's a nice sense of freedom, like, Oh, I have it on official. Somebody can rent it. It's easy. You know, you can have it on whatever, you know, I guess in this country, we, other people can rent from Vimeo. I don't know if you have a platform mm, like yeah, that. Yeah, they use yeah. that in, in, in Yeah, in, in Netherlands, too. we have a, a pate, which is the big cinema mm -hmm. and, and it's still on that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's another yeah. way to watch it. Yeah. So it's, is this what, and so Fortunate Son is your fourth film you said, or how many films have you it's, made? It's, it's the third. Your third I, I film. Made, yeah, but okay. it, it, I, I say two because one, say, I, I, okay. yeah. Well, congrats. Like Not my movie, yeah. Congratulations on being at the Woodstock <laughs> Film Festival. I know Miera and the co founder of the festival is going to be going to uh, the Leiden Film Festival. Right. Okay. Right. And so in October, yeah. yep. maybe you could tell us about that. I don't know all the details, but I do know that it's like an exchange. So yeah, she yeah. curated or Biden Film Festival curated the films to come here to the Woodstock Film Festival because exactly. there's two other Dutch films. Exactly. And I have not met yeah. those guys. Do you know? Do you know them as well? Yeah, yeah, I know, you know your one director really well. Okay, Which, and, and, and what's that film? Yeah, he made a, a beautiful movie. Uh, uh, Narcosis. Called Narcosis. Yes. Um, okay, Narcosis. It's playing today. Today. Um, I think in Socrates. In Socrates as he's, well. He's he's on his his way now. Okay. He made it from New York. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Through the because it's like. Raining. We're about to pick him up like in 30 minutes from wow. the station. From the station. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, because it's they, you know, how they blow it up on mainstream media. It's like yeah. an emergency. Well, Everything's yeah. underwater. And we're over here going, what? You know, we're yeah. at a festival and we're hoping oh. it doesn't affect things, oh. you know. But also, you know, at the same time, people are safe and they're getting where they need to go. Yeah, so that's great to know that he's going to be here. Yeah. What's the other Dutch film? The other one's called Goodbye Stranger. Goodbye Stranger. Yeah. And that's about two young people. Yeah, you know? really typical Amsterdam. Right. Uh, well, young yeah. people not knowing Pop to know what, of, what, what to yeah. do with their uh, lost city, uh, yes. city. I call them like city dwellers yes. where we go there. This is what I did too. moved to New York City. And you're like, there's yeah. just so much going on. So many cultures, so many people, you know, there's the there's like sort of like the dark underbelly that like you can easily yeah. get a part of, you know, and I went to Amsterdam, too. And I walked through the red light district. I went to there's a red light district in um, in, uh, in in uh, Germany in yeah. Hamburg. Hamburg. Yeah. yeah. And it's just such an interesting vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's a smaller one, but I always thought the red light district in Amsterdam was so interesting, but I, you know, I don't know if that's part of the film. It's, it's no, it's not, yeah. but, it, but it's, yeah. It's a fascinating as, 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 as you know, Amsterdam crazy. used to be really, but it's, it changed it's a lot. Changed. It's gentrified totally. Yeah, it's, it gentrified. I, I moved out because of yeah. that. I, um... The heart and soul of cities, yeah. unfortunately, have to go. And it really is True. not cool because the, the sort of the grimy, gritty, um, I mean, I would say, you know, obviously the artists, yeah. we get pushed out. We get it's pushed old. out so that the kind of like total insanity gets balanced a little bit. It's, 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 it's pretty interesting what's going on. And I find it crazy that even in Europe, it's oh, yeah. almost the same thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. our cultures aren't that different, I guess you could say, but it's still no. interesting that 
gentrification just happens in every city, every in every part yeah. of the world. We're it moving, doesn't matter. We're moving to smaller towns yeah, or even villages. This is just this is yeah, no, like, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, you're doing the same thing. You, you just said you're moving exactly. outside of the city into right. a kind of an area like this in the country yeah. a little bit more with the smaller cities. Yeah. We're all doing that. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being yeah. on the podcast. Um, and you know, good luck with your film. And I'm going to watch it 100 percent and you know, enjoy your time here. And I did want to ask you about the Light and Film Festival. You, so your film is going to be shown there as well. How does that work? What's no, the? You, it's, they're it's just, a, it was just there. Curating, it's, they curated. Um, they, they, yeah, but it showed there because it looked. I saw pictures of it. It looks like amazing. I mean, yeah. Well, just, the, it's it's about it's still on in October. In October, uh, it's going to screen yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, right. So, That's what I was asking. Okay. So, but they'll they'll uh, uh, they'll definitely screen the um, three picks from this festival. Ah, okay. The three so, exactly so we're going to yeah. curate woodstock film festival american yes films because we're doing it with the dutch like new york cultural right Eliza, Eliza, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, it's called. yeah 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 so we'll um, be going so that's the thing woodstock is woodstock film festival is going to have three curated films out of the god knows how many films are showing here 100 and something right but they're yeah. going to be in october in it at the leiden film festival which is in which but part of Hall? Is it it's in, in the West? It's it's near the Hague. Near the Hague. It's, uh, near the Hague. Okay. It's it's very near Amsterdam. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Take care. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll see you next time. And we're live at the 24th Woodstock Film Festival, and we're having amazing conversations with filmmakers. I'm your host, Katie Mejia, and next up we have Lydia Hilcher, and she made an, a beautiful, incredible, interactive film. Called homing instinct and she can describe it more because it's it's pretty amazing squeeze back here thank you for joining us hello how are you i'm good how are you yeah <laughs> i'm doing well so tell us all about your project okay. it's something you have to see to believe hard to describe when you do the interactive tell us tell us how you describe it okay well homing instinct is based on a short story by danny mclean and it's part of an anthology called Octavia's Brood. It's science fiction stories from social justice movements. Science and, fiction stories from social justice movements. Wow. Yes. Okay. And I have been working on a science fiction film. I'm a climate activist and I wanted to tell a climate story. And I had remembered reading Danny's story a long time ago and feeling very moved by it. So I called her up and I said, could we collaborate? She was excited to do that. And I originally adapted it and shot it as a film. But while I was making it, I really felt that the emotional aspects of our relationship with nature, our relationship to the future could really be visually told in a more immersive setting. So after I finished making the film, I set about to adapt it into a three screen immersive installation, which is now up for the first time here at Woodstock, and um, it's an exciting moment. And how long is it going to be up? It's up for, um, it's been five days that, that we're launching it, right in conjunction with the film festival. So it'll be up till Sunday, um, 6 p.m. It plays on the half hour, every half hour, uh, films 28 minutes, and um, it's just, you know, an immersive experience because you have the other sort of installations as well. So you have the installations you can kind of come through and see, and then you have three massive screens. And it's when you say immersive, you're literally like, and you know, we have the three massive screens. So tell us like why that and why, why this setup with, with this project? Well, I, I like the visual style of telling a, a story and from kind of a macro and a micro point of view. So I think the, the macro is the world that we live in, the mm -hmm. landscapes. Um, we have sky, space, land, water. And um, then the characters provide the internal journey. And so, um, you know, it, it, it's a format that gives you an ability to look at different things on the screen. Obviously the filmmakers guiding you, but you have options to look at things from other angles, other dimensions. And because one of the main themes of the film is to take a look at our relationship to nature and how with what's happening with the planet, could it really be that we've disconnected ourselves from nature? Do we see ourselves as apart from nature, as separate? Um, and I think what the film is trying to do is encourage people to think about 
themselves as human beings as nature that we we are living breathing regenerating cell nature like plants and animals and it's beautiful that it's like through technology technically that we have to be reminded <laughs> because we've been gone through this but i always say that people see nature as the backdrop to their life mm -hmm. and when you get really reconnected back with nature like i'm a huge person that grounds i'm sure you know about that where you just take your shoes off and you go stand in your backyard if you have one Hopefully you do, because um, I lived in you know a huge city for forever, and I you couldn't even barely do that. And I just I constantly just was feeling not sick, but just like borderline off. And then now when I get too much technology, because that's what I deal with as you know artists and filmmakers, you're just constantly dealing with technology. I can go in my backyard, and take my shoes off, and for 15 minutes, literally, and I can feel my whole just it it goes down and it's 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 subtle but i can actually sense it now because i have reconnected but it took decades because i lost that connection being in a massive city which is not really my personality but i mean you know i just happen to live in a big city and eventually you realize okay that's really not you and you have to like take a step back so it's it's a very powerful message mm -hmm. and i but i find it also ironic in a sense that you're you're utilizing interactive media and technology to remind people that they need to be reconnected back with nature. Well, and it's that's right. And the film is set in Brooklyn. It's set in Coney Island. And I'm always, I love Coney Island. It's kind of- Yeah, really it's a love-hate. I mean, I lived there for, for, for 15, 20 years. There's a lot of people, I mean, it's a love-hate, right? I, You're lo like, I love it. It's just- I'll visit I just, it, but I don't think I'm gonna live I there. love to go yeah, there. Yeah, it's fun. And um, I'm always, you know, there's the Coney Island Aquarium right on yep. the boardwalk. So we're living in this time of climate change when we're losing a lot of biodiversity. The ocean life is in trouble. And yet there's this aquarium on the boardwalk where all of these different species are being preserved. And, and you know, a lot of zoos and aquariums have become places of conservation. Almost. Now. And they used to not be. It used to be like, oh, yeah. take the take the animal out of, of, of its, of its, of its home and then put it into a small box. Mm. But it's almost now they've shifted a little bit and realized they've kind of playing a different role. And, and some, some thing. of these, you know, places are actually rehabilitating species and then reintegrating them into the wild. So it's, it's a, it's an, it's an interesting point that we're in. And um, my acupuncturist, um, works as a volunteer diver in the aquarium every other weekend and i, I when she told me that i was like you mean you you there's sharks in those tanks you swim in those tanks and yeah that's what she, she's been doing it for 15 years so one of the characters is um, a marine biologist at the coney island aquarium it's, she's played by barrett doss who many people have seen on the series station 19 that's a gray's anatomy spinoff and she's fantastic and she plays a best friend to Raven, who is played by Kaneta Kanutu, and uh, and uh, their they play their friendship is kind of at the heart of the story about you know the president has given this executive order everybody in a coastal city must reposition. Well, you know, I, you were there. Were you leave. there during Sandy? We were there. I was living there. I lived in Red Hook, well, Brooklyn, you know. and it was twelve feet of sand. And yeah. we lost we lost power for three weeks, and the price gouging gas. There was eight, you know, four hours in line to get gas in your car. I mean, it was like the end of the world. It that was might be happening today. And, and I, and I have to say, <laughs> it's a very strange day today because we've been, the conversation of course naturally keeps going back to sort of what is going on there. And I find it so interesting because I tell people this all the time when that happened, it caused everyone in the area to suddenly realize that, wow, we need to do something different than what we're doing. Right. So they built a whole foods, that is powered by, it's 100% powered by, it's a net zero building mm -hmm. that is powered by solar panel. And they have these crazy wind turbines. And I met the person who designed it. And they actually, the wind turbines could plug into your electric car. Wow. So my husband is an electric car nut. And so we, of course, had an electric car like way before you should probably have an electric car because especially living in the city, it's extremely hard to plug it all in and all that. It's yeah. just a nightmare. But we used to go to the Whole Foods in Brooklyn where after Sandy and plug our car into a wind turbine and a That's solar amazing. panel. So you're telling me we cannot do that. But guess what happened? It just went back to normal. They, I, I think at one point the car charger like broke, it quit working. They didn't even fix it up. They just, it was just like a cover. It was like a wrap for what had happened. 
and I thought to myself, how is there not more just net zero buildings? Why wouldn't Whole Foods, who has this ungodly amount of money, take this project? And how are they not everywhere? And how come I can't just plug my electric car into a solar panel? And you can't. So but it's, it's but but it may be coming. Back it should be because, coming because I think with the acceleration of I mean I I agree right. with you. I thought with Sandy this is exactly what Al Gore said was going to happen. Yeah. Manhattan was going to go underwater, and I thought okay, it's happened. And then but yeah. then what happened? Yeah. It all went back. Yeah. We just they went straight back to their ways. Yeah. I I I like even with the Kingston Food Co-op because I live in Kingston. I, I I was telling them about this Whole Foods. It's a net zero Whole Foods. I could plug my car into a solar panel, and they were like, really? No one has even heard about it. They almost like did it just to put a bandage on it and then just there was no press about it no nothing because it's like they didn't really want that they don't it's like the powers that be somehow put a block on this in in so many different ways you know what i mean and it's it's bureaucracy it's corruption it's all these things but what do you think about you know that type of scenario if we're underwater how do we get as activists you know because you're using your art you know and you're an activist or you're filming your art to to say these things how do we really make the change in the sense of like, okay, really getting down to the details of it, like with what I, happened during Sandy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there is, I mean, research has shown us that there is a, a huge psychological distancing between the reality of the climate altered world right. that we're living or environmental in. Environmental destruction and, in general, because you, you have your yeah. paper bag and you throw it and it goes into the ocean. Yeah. Are you, I mean, even with during the whole mass thing, I saw pictures millions of pictures of masks in the ocean and they're made of microfibers those masks it's they're terrible. horrible it's and terrible. people have no concept and they just yeah. put it and during the whole thing i saw a mask after mask after mask on the yeah. ground and it in there you know and it just goes into the water supply it just yeah. runs into your water and of yeah. course we live near the hudson you know the hudson river which is one of the greatest sort of you know disasters i yeah. like to say um and awesome. and here we are you know we're we're kind of just Little by little, we try to do things on on a small level, and we try to clean things up. But we, like you said, I feel like we're really distanced from mm -hmm. the damage that mm -hmm. is happening and then the destruction. Mm -hmm. No, it's true, and that is why there is a climate storytelling movement right. emerging. It because is because we yeah. realize that there's a narrative that larger corporations and fossil fuel companies have put into place to deflect responsibility onto the individual. And it and, should be the corp. And it should One, be the corporations. Thank you. I mean, in 2006, BP invented the personal carbon calculating for, 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 to calculate your carbon footprint. And, and it really was all about taking the attention away, away from, from the them and putting it on me, so, the person with the plastic bag. When they made the plastic bag and they don't have to make those plastic bags, mm -hmm. they really don't. What they do is they take all the excess from their whatever mm -hmm. and they just and they give it away for free because it's their extra waste mm -hmm. from their product. And it should be at that corporate level going, you know what? You're going to not make these bags anymore. Mm -hmm. You're just stop making them. They, they didn't exist at one point. Mm -hmm. We could live our lives without plastic bags. I mean, I'm just giving an example. I mean, there's yeah. straws and whatever yeah. else, but I'm just saying, you know, and that's, a, that's and, just this microcosm. Of and, and, and to really, you know, sometimes it's just time to get into the street. And, you know, we, I was, um, I'm a WGA member and oh, I was okay. on the picket line oh, and we, okay. a couple of weeks before we, um, <laughs> thankfully resolved it. Well, yeah, I would um, love to know the update on that from your perspective. We, we, we hosted a climate labor picket. We did a lot of theme pickets, you know, during this time. And the, um, the young people from the March to End Fossil Fuels wanted to join us. So we combined forces. We picketed outside Amazon and HBO down the street from BlackRock. And we really, um, and it was a great day and it was a, a lot of energy leading up to the big march of 75,000 people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the Sunday, September 17th. Beautiful. And, you know, I was thinking a lot about, well, what am I going to say about climate storytelling and fossil fuels and what would I, and really it was very interesting to think back about this BP story and think back about the narrative, you know, the narrative that, you know, corporations and big powers that be put out there you know, that sort of are the things that make us keep our head down, that we we're, we don't have control. We are, we're helpless. And well, but, only, a, only I mean, a few, I would say a year ago, people knew what BlackRock was. I yeah. didn't even know. I mean, I know, I know a lot about these things and I yeah. look into it. I didn't even know about BlackRock yeah. and the, and the other one, I forgot what they're called, which has a similar name. I mean, we didn't even know that this is the source of where all the stuff is coming from. Yeah. 
No one so, even knew that. And so now the, so we the, know that. So the chant that yeah. day became take back the narrative, take back the narrative, yes. which was really, which is really important because I think, you know, if you've worked in Hollywood a long time, which I have for over 30 years, you know that it takes a lot to turn the ship around. And it takes right. it takes a lot of pressure from the outside to turn the ship around. So that's what we're trying to do. And well, we have a panel beautiful. on and Sunday. No, so the panel is, tell us all about the panel. That was my next question. You just segued right into it. Okay. On Sunday at three o'clock at White Feather Farm, we're doing a panel on climate storytelling. I'm super excited because we have Meredith Milton coming in from Natural Resources Defense Council. And NRDC has a program called Rewrite the Future. And they are working with Hollywood. They're bringing scientists in. They're, you know, they do, they, they actually have a core business of litigation and policy. So they're very much on the forefront of what we all could be thinking and doing. And doing. And um, so we're so Meredith has worked with our WGA, the Writers Guild, and the mm -hmm. Producers Guild. Um, work who those of us who want to incorporate more climate into our storytelling. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a climate themed project. You yeah. know, you you can just think about what people's jobs are. They could have clean energy jobs. You know, they can be, you know, there can be weather as obstacles. Yeah, I mean, for, I, and I <laughs> like to I like to use the word just environment, which is what they used to use yeah. instead of climate, because climate to me it kind of it's just like one. Piece of it mm -hmm. but like the environment as a whole i mean that's the word that i always use because i don't want to like you know just confuse people because i think sometimes that word can confuse people because there's so much more to it than that mm -hmm. and nowadays i feel like that's that's like what we're using mm -hmm. what we're putting out there we have to really be careful with our words and well, sometimes and, and it, it can kind of be used against who us you, who, exactly. you're, who you're talking who to you're talking i mean to. a lot of times we we talk about health and safety we talk about you know, worker safety. I mean, you know, people are losing their homes. They There's are. more climate refugees in America yeah. than we've ever anticipated. And um, yeah, and I think, you know. So I love that you're joining forces. Like you kind of have this sort of like, you know, the the Hollywood has finally reached a point where, you know, thank God it's, it's I mean, you know, the strikes for 100 and almost 50 days yeah. was unbelievable that it would last that long. I mean, I just, I couldn't believe it. I thought once, once the actors, you know, were involved and there was SAG and, you know, all the people that have slightly more power, I thought, Oh, sh for sure. You know, there's going to be, but they sat on it for that long and just goes to show you that they are really, really, you know, they're, they're, they don't want it to change, but we have to be very, and, and, and join forces. So I love the fact that you're, you join forces with well, these different organizations and then and then we're just all kind of it's, coming it's, together it's to necessary. be able to yeah it's necessary it because our business is is dominated by big corporations now when we the streamers the streamers are not coming from storytelling places they're coming from business and so when we're dealing with the amazons the netflix the apples it's their their core business is something else right and so it's a it's a very it's a very tricky situation i think this has been a year we've seen it all over the country it's been a year for unionism and and all of these unions have stood together and it's something that's going to be necessary going forward. So what do you, and so just to, just to, you know, segue, and I'm super excited about that panel too, by the way. So that's going to be amazing. Is it, is, I know a lot of the panels get completely sold out. Is that one still, are there still availability for any of these panels? They just are pretty much, if you don't get your tickets early, you pretty much can't be involved in the panels. Well, I think anybody sh should come yeah. that wants to come. We're going to pack them in. Okay, yeah, and just men in. mention my name and say that you okay. and I'll be there at the door. Lydia Dion Pilcher. Okay. I'm <laughs> so great. Okay, awesome. So just segueing to the the strike itself and what you think is going to happen. Like from your perspective, you've been in Hollywood for 30 something years, you know, what's been coming out and we've done several podcasts. We did one with, um, you know, several different people that have all had amazing impact, um, you know, but ultimately, what do you think is going to happen with this agreement? I mean, it's a tentative. I don't know what the latest is every day. It's well, the, it's, it's going out for a membership vote. The okay. Bo the boards have ratified it. And, and I so think it's good to go because they were saying I, that well, the, the membership has to vote. It takes a little right. time to make all of that. They were saying some of the language was questionable because the whole, yeah. you know, I mean, the artificial intelligence thing is also something that like they can with their lawyers, mm -hmm. they can make some, you know, they can do some things with those words and then it gets sort of, you know, 
I think um, it was reassuring it was that the CEOs were in the room and that, right. that they're still a part of it. And I think they're going to be part, they're going in on the SAG after negotiations as well. I, I think that's really important. You know, you, know, you don't have to have the telephone game as much, but I think, um, you know, all of it is important. The unions now will turn to the membership and this is the same thing that happened with the DGA. I'm a DGA member also, you know, the, the negotiating committees, the national boards, once their positions are, you know, sort of solidified then you turn to the membership and you talk to the membership answer people's questions and you know it's been a it's been a long time and a lot of people are really suffering from the strike so we we it's feel that ready. it was very very a very very powerful turnout and an effort from i mean unions supporting all unions we're so grateful to the teamsters and to ia and to sag after and we'll be there for them until their contract is, is solidified as well and, um, you know, it's it's heartening that the CEOs got out of their office and came to the table because that's really where it has to happen. Well, finally. I mean, yeah. good Lord. I just I couldn't go on any any longer. So congratulations on that. That's major. Let's we started with homing instinct, your your uh, immersive video installation. It's it's down from the filmmakers lab. Um, 34 it, Tinker Street. There you go. Let's give the address. <laughs> and it's there for a couple more days. And then after that, would it would you do you move it to other places? I mean, it literally could be a MoMA. I mean, it's like amazing. It oh, really is. Thank you. It's incredible. It's thank beautiful. You. It's thank just, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's really powerful. But what what happens? I mean, because it's such an amazing thing that you put together and it's a yeah, lot of work. Well, it was, time. you know, this is the first time it's been, you know, it's it's the premiere, it's yeah. the launch. And it's, this is the first it's, of, it's, of doing a piece like this, mm -hmm. like with the different the different screens and the immersive interactive yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time doing that. Yeah. What inspired you to do that? Like I just it was up? looking, I think that this, you know, I think our relationship to climate, our relationship to nature, our relationship to the future is extremely emotional. And I was looking for the most emotional way to create an experience for people to connect to those ideas. Beautiful. All right. Well, you guys got to go see it. Thank you so much for being <laughs> on. You. And I hope you distributed some flower flyers yeah. and that yeah. people know about it and they're going to go check it out. Definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. And that was Lydia Dean Pil Pilcher. We're still live at the Woodstock Film Festival. I'm your host, Katie Mejia. And we've got one more special guest. Um, we have, I believe, is it Isa? Great. Isa. You ready? Isa with quarter to three. Yeah, come join me. You've been really doing the pe the publicity rounds today. We you came into the the la the filmmaker lounge and suddenly we had you on Radio Kingston. You were Sorry. on <laughs> you were on uh, a couple different shows, but you thank just, you for joining us. So, oh, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So your last name, Isa. I don't want to mess it up. Tota. Tota. Tota yeah. What is your What is your background? My what heritage. Is, yeah. I am. A, I am a Palestinian American. Wow. Yeah, I know, pretty deep. That's very deep. <laughs> I met like a Palestinian hip hop artist one time. Really? And oh, yeah. he was amazing. He came and like rapped in in um in Arabic. Yeah. Arabic. Yeah, yeah. And it was beautiful. It was great. I think yeah. it's a really nice language. I think I always think that French and Arabic work work really well in in that style of music yeah, they do. or something. It's it's in yeah. even yeah. Japanese. But I thought I I was like oh I can actually listen to this. There's something it's so um, I don't know. It just flows well with there's with some poetry. Too, it's po it's very Arabic. it's like yeah. It's As like opposed to the Hollywood depiction. Yeah, the Arab speaking. The, the, it's all which is Arab going, blah, 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 but it's, but actual Arabic is it's very melodic. It is and like Rumi and I'm saying his name wrong because that's not how you say it. The poet. How do you uh, say it? Uh, Rami. Rami. Yeah, yeah. He is an inspiration to a lot of Western people. I think it's interesting because it's so beautiful and it really is something that isn't depicted in film. So let's yeah. get into your film, yeah, yeah. your film quarter to three. Yes. Tell us all about it. Well, it's a short film. Um, it's a very unusual film. You might've heard of Ben Vereen. Yes. Yeah. Ben Vereen is a legendary uh, for those that don't know, because uh, I run into young people here. They're like, who, you know, um, but uh, back in the day he did uh, chicken George and roots and uh, did a lot of Broadway, did hair and uh, of course, that's the Pippin. one that we all know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all those uh, amazing shows and stuff. And he sings, he dances, Incredible. he's a triple threat, which is also sings, a lost dance, art, yeah, a total lost art, yeah, acting, singing, dancing. Um, and I um, I met him several years ago, and I had a script about a father and a son, it was a bit heavy, and we sent it to him, and um, and then my casting director said, uh, didn't Ben's son die today? And we're like, what? She was, I think he did. And we're like, he didn't say anything. And so my ex um, uh, called him and he reluctantly admitted that that's what happened. So we said, uh, don't read the script because it was a little too heavy, father-son thing, his son just died. 
And I had heard, because I'd known him, that uh, he had a couple of tragedies. Like uh, years ago, he got hit by a car walking on the Pacific Coast Highway and was in the hospital, almost died. And then he had a daughter that died prematurely as well. So I was like, wow, that's really heavy. And I told my producer, look, I can't have him do this other script uh, just too much. And she said, well, write him something. Too too close to home. Yeah, way too close. So uh, she said, write him something. So I sat down and I wrote him something and I sent it to my producer. She said, this is great, but it's worse than the first one. Oh, my God. In the sense that it was really close to home. It was just, I kind of thought, like, if I was him, what would I want to say to whomever, God or whoever? So that's what this film wow. is. It's just his, and you know Ben Vereen. If you know him, he's a he's a smiling guy. Well, that's probably how. I mean, some people that have tragedy, they have that kind of personality, and they can sort of keep going. Like, yeah. if you're sort of a downward, dark person, you have tragedy. I don't think you're gonna make it. So yeah. I almost feel like God sort of puts. I mean, you know, you sure. have these experiences, and, and can you handle it? Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. And yeah. that's what he was famous for: the, the smile. He's all that jazz. He's always smiling. You know. Mm-hmm. And so this is different for him because it had to reveal some really personal, can I swear on this thing? Yeah. Yeah, personal shit, you know, yeah. and that was tough. It was really tough. And I um, I really was honored that he was willing to go down that road. Wow. Know? Well, it's therapeutic, you know, at it the is. end of the day, like facing things, is, it, it is. just kind of helps you move through it. Yeah, so. it, it is therapeutic. Yeah. But getting there sometimes is difficult. Yeah. And it was, it was, a, it was a, an emotional day. That we shot this thing. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. So, are you screening? Tell us when your screening is. Or yeah, it's tomorrow at 5 p.m. at the uh, Woodstock Community Center. Woodstock Community Center. Yeah. Yeah. uh, With a group of shorts about artists revealing some aspect of their lives. Yes. So it's a kind of a good grouping. I'm looking forward to seeing the other shorts. That's fantastic. So, is this your first? I mean, not your first film, but is this like? I mean, where are you in your filmmaking career? Been a um, long sort of journey, or good question. No, I've made some shorts. Uh, I've been at uh, numerous uh, festivals, and uh, is your first time at Woodstock? First time at Woodstock, which has been an incredible experience. Right, it's you an know. amazing place, isn't it? I mean, it's so. I always tell people it's not pretentious. No, I'm from Austin, and I I dealt with the whole South by Southwest insanity. Oh yeah, as, and I was involved in it. I was part of it, and I just remember. You know, thinking that the last one I went to, that was it. I'm done. Because they <laughs> then they added co- a comedy, and I st- and I was like, I was going to see stand up comedy. It was like oh music, God. yeah, film, yeah. which everyone knew it was impossible to get into any of that. And it was film was a little bit less because they're kind of. Le- I mean, yeah. the film scene there is really interesting, you know, because yeah. I got into film from like Richard Linklater and some of the awesome people. Sure. So it's like less kind of pretentious. But then it now it's become this like, wow, you know, a completely different thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's just. Oh, this just has such a. I love the vibe here, you know. I it's love so the vibe. Cool. Here. It, it's it's pure. Yeah, it's pure independent cinema. One hundred percent. And I'm like a lot of like Scorsese and others. I'm I'm kind of frustrated that cinema has been dying. Yeah. And here it's it's really pure. It's just people it's who pure. love films about people. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. There's such a theme running through it, and it, so much of it is just like kind of. I wouldn't say, you know all serious i mean certainly there's most people that make films they know they have to put some jokes in there or something make people laugh somewhere but these the films here are really interesting this body work the mirror kind of curates it's like you know you got the sofa sofia coppola type films which Mm -hmm. you know last night was very land and i'm you know you're watching someone that's dying of aids in this film very heavy stuff but then beautiful you know shot and just like just you know and, and sort of you know coming out of it and 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 just coming into the light so i just feel like there's a lot of like kind of darkness that moves through you know a lot of the the films here and they were people are kind of making a joke that last year i think the opening films here was one was about the holocaust and the other was about like a child sex ring or something like that and we were laughing we're like damn mirror like this is some you know dark shit but it's it's not all of them have like a you know they lift you they're not just leaving you on the side of the road you know some films can just have endings like that you're like you just took me this whole thing and you can't give me something because I cannot, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have that in my regular life. Oh, that's so, right. That's right. so like with your ending of your film, cause I like to talk about endings. How did, especially with the short form format, how did you decide, like, how did you do a beginning, middle and end and, and, you know, in a short film, like, how does that work for you? Well, I, 
I tend to do a big ending, middle, and You're a big short film. Middle Some yeah. short film don't creators have don't like it. Yeah. They actually don't like it's it. It's just like a scene they out of a movie. A scene it's a, a scene point. out of a movie and yeah. a turning point. Yeah. And some books will say, don't give us a middle, beginning, middle, yeah. end. But I'm, that's just me. I'm just my own expression. It's, it is Thank a story. You. <laughs> and I love what you said about the light at the end of it because I think we can and we should delve into dark subjects. 100%. But I don't want to leave the audience no, you can't ready leave to slip their wrists when they leave my films. So I try to put an element of hope. Because, you know, what really it's about is how do you handle tragedy in your life? And there's two ways. You can go down and you can go up. You can find a way, a glimmer mm, yeah, of body hope. Chills. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you got to find that. And so that's that's my really my point to Ben and through him, you know, acting it, is that there's, there is a way to keep going and find that glimmer and that light that you mentioned. And that's the beauty. Of, I mean, just because you made a short, how long is your film? 18 minutes. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, in 18 minutes, you can do beginning, middle, and end pretty easily. I've seen, you know, short films that are just like five, six minutes. It's like pretty Harder. hard to get that in there. But Harder. how how did you decide on that length? Did you want to do a feature? Or it was because it was sort of just like a, pro, not a profile, but it was like on kind of one thing. Did you, you felt like when you started it, it was going to be like a, 18 minute thing or did you see it going longer or shorter how does that work with the film like that it just kind of i just uh, spilled my guts i kind of like took on his his persona and if i was ben and i just spilled my guts on a piece of paper and i looked at it i said oh that's not too bad you know um, but listen it's just one one man i mean that takes place in a theater in the middle of the night and he walks in on an empty you know empty stage nobody in the audience and starts to speak to somebody, God, somebody. You know? And um, the biggest challenge was, can I sustain that interest, have a structure without other characters, without, you know. The one-man show yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. the black box theater Well, thing. there you yeah. go. It is kind of a one-man show. So it is a kind of a hybrid theater film. It is. I kind of get in that sense. I'm getting that yeah. sense. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, your other films that you've done in the past, what do you feel like, are you going to do something similar or what do you see, you know, what are you working on right now? Like you, I obviously you're a screenwriter yeah. and a director. I'm a director. And so, so what's, what's, you know, are you going to go to different festivals with this or you have projects in the works? Like what's next for you? Well, I've got a few things in the works. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of features that I'm working on. I have another short that, uh, the one I originally sent to Ben that uh, I think, we might uh, just go shoot. Oh, just after all, you're you. He, he, I mean, he went through the dirt with this one. Well, he, he wanted to do well both. Just, he wanted to do both. <laughs> He's like, this is like, I, I don't need to pay a therapist. I'm just gonna go make a movie. Like, let me yeah, just do save this. him some money. Yeah. <laughs> but there's there's a, a pet project that's I've honestly been floating around Hollywood. It's been optioned. Uh, you know, I think James Seamus won an award. Here. Oh, yeah, he, James he, was on our podcast. I love. Oh James. yeah, James yeah. is amazing. He uh, optioned it when he was at Focus. Oh, really? When he was then, at Focus. Yeah, but then he left and didn't get made. Uh, like, oh, I still no, like. That's... I still have. Uh, crossing my fingers like it's, it's, and because it's a personal story it's kind of like the arab american diner where it's about me and my friends trying to figure out who the heck we are with parents that spoke with heavy accents how are you and, yeah. and uh, we're trying to be americans but we're Which trying you, to be americans too hard you know <laughs> and it's, i had a lot yeah. of arabic students and they were they were just oh i loved their heart and their soul and they yeah. were just it was they just have such a different culture. I mean, it's so different. And then trying to like figure out their way, you know, yeah. it's quite a challenge. But and, and for us as young Americans, yeah. you know, and trying to, you know, is it, it is. I mean, because it's, it's like a clash. It was like oh, it's, you got a, this, it's just like a clash. <laughs> you got yeah. generation clash yep. and a culture clash. And that's and then, the craziest thing because yeah. we all, even as Americans, we have horrible culture clash. I mean, generation clash for right sure. now because of the internet yeah. and just the social media and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Like, yeah. you know, my dad's is fairly old, but he's just been technically shy. He still doesn't really even text message. Mm. And then, you know, some people don't know how Instagram works and Instagram mm. stories. And I mean, you know, mm. and that's so much a part of our life. And it, mm. it you just have this like massive gap, gap yeah. you know, and culturally, you know, I think that's, that's like, we could kind of deal with that, but the technological gap that really causes a rift, yeah. you know, cause it's your communication mechanism. For sure. And it changes every two years. Yeah. Like, every oh, two no, years. You know you, no one can keep up with that. <laughs> it's like Facebook was out. Oh, that's passe. Yeah, now forget and it. we got this now other thing. And TikTok. Like, wait, yeah, I don't even know TikTok. what that I is. I don't still, even know what TikTok we, is. We published a TikTok, like our stuff. Do you? It's just, well, you can, I mean, I do, I really, you know, it's, I've always loved YouTube because I'm, I, that's sure. my generation. I could have had a whole, like, I wish I would have, I was actually a little bit, I'm a little bit too old for it, but I could have been one of those people that just had a channel uh -huh. and just traveled the world and sure. made crazy videos that about shit. Fun. Cause that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. I'm like, that would have fit my personality perfectly, sure. but I was a little bit late in the game. But I, I, I see that generation that does that and I'm like, yeah. wow. And then, yeah. you know, there's like YouTube shorts, you know, of course sure. they, so, so like, 
I can follow it to a degree and I can be a part of something like something like TikTok or something that's just like, mm-hmm. I don't know what that is and I don't get it and I don't understand. I mean, it's not that different from like a YouTube short yeah. and stuff, but I, I don't know. It's just its own thing that was created in China and like I, it's just throwing me off. But like I see how that, you know, the yeah. world is it's yeah. getting goes in a different direction and it's it I don't even understand it. And I'm at that point. I've gotten there, too. I don't know what the heck. <laughs> It does or anything. I, I listen. I couldn't explain it to you either. So don't <laughs> ask me. Ask one of the twenty-year-olds or something like that. They do. And they don't even know. So I, we have interns with the Woodstock Film Festival. I'm like, could someone get on TikTok and just figure out like what the video? I'm like, oh, three hundred people watched this video that we just posted about a filmmaker, and they're like, oh, that's cool. But I mean, you probably wouldn't even know you're probably on there or something. No, I don't I'm know. Not. We posted so much stuff on there and people watch it, but I'm like, I don't interact or do anything. I guess there's no algorithm that says that. Oh. You know, because you're supposed to click and like other things, and that's how other people will look at your stuff. I get that. But we don't even do that on TikTok. Nobody's ever on there, but then we still get people watching. And I'm like, okay, so we'll just keep posting there, but I still don't know what it does. I don't get it. As long as people are watching, we're good, right? All right, well, thank you so much. That was amazing. I can't wait to see your film. And good luck. And we'll see you at the next Woodstock Film Festival. I don't know. Come back. We're coming back. Come back. All right. Take care. Thank you. And we're still live at the Woodstock Film Festival. I was looking for Adam, our other host. Um, Adam Shartoff, he was going to relieve me. But hi, we've got our next special guest here. My audio is sounding a little strange because there's so many people in the background. But we have Will. Yep. Yes. Will Felker. Cool. Music supervisors. I love music supervisors. I've done some of that myself. Yeah. So the film that you worked on is the... Wow, the yeah. featherweight. Yeah. My gosh. Well, this is an honor. So tell us all about it. How did you get involved? And let me tweak this audio because there's a lot of people talking really yes. loud in the background yes. and it's sounding a little bit strange. Okay. There we go. It's much better. We're yeah. good? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the featherweight is a, been a project I've been with for about two years now. I know the writer, uh, Steve Loft, very well. And he brought me on when we shot in Hartford. Wow. Then Rob Kolodny, the director, brought me back in post to do music. And it was a real feat of independent filmmaking <laughs> because uh, there is a version of the soundtrack that's probably ran us about 400 k uh, I was about to say I was going to get into all of that loveliness. <laughs> so um, this is a really great uh, example of how high finishing costs can be. And there's some solutions there. So the two groups that came to really help us finish this movie for music you said, you said it was so you made all your selections right you, know, you probably had i don't know i hope not the rolling stones or the beatles in there but you said four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yes. was the music was that that wasn't the budget but that's what it came to to license that's all the music to when we were looking at the tracks that, that you wanted to license that yeah. he selected so you had a four hundred thousand dollars but that was not right. in the budget so 86 so you 86 you know, okay 86 the uh expensive soundtrack and then i brought on a team of composers called retail space and they are a really delightful group of people a good entry point for them is a project called in the losha that's l-o-t-i-a um it's a 25 minute short film that uh they did around an album of the same title. So uh, they were really integral to getting the sound right for the mid 60s setting of the project. And then that gave me some room to work with a library company called DeWolf. That's Wolf with an E. Uh, that how, did is, you, how did you find these people? These are just like friends or after doing this for so long. Because there's so many different licensing companies. Like I myself, like Robert Green, our editor, actually uses this group with his students. Uh, he teaches at Mizzou in Missouri. And um, so I wrote them and I was like, listen, this is the situation. I think that music was kind of an aftersight for this film. When, when is it not? I mean, it's so sad, like, because music, you know, it, it's everything. If you don't have the right music, if you have it, you know, don't have the right. But then it's always the afterthought every time because there's so much that goes into a film. I get it. And it's always the last thing. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It makes sense. But still. yeah, DeWolf is an incredible group of people. De Wolf. De Wolf. That's D E next word Wolf. Okay. W O L F E. Uh, they will work with you and they are very good. So at- they'll replace the Beatles track that cost $100,000 or something yeah, they, they- and get something in the 60s 
that was either created in the 60s or someone that's creating music that sound that sounds like it was made in the 60s correct. which one is it correct it's a library of original music from the time period. from from actually the 60s not yes. someone who can make a sound a song that sort of sounds like the 60s or is there, or there are both the options there's both but, options yeah, okay, yeah. but but no they're great and you know they'll work with you and give you a production blanket so that you can actually get the Wow. music in the mill movie. That's incredible. <laughs> so like, um, give me an example of the track that you kind of replaced. There was like the really expensive, well-known 60s song that was replaced. Yeah, I mean, we had Shangri-Las from a passing Shangri-La. car, right? How so much this, was that? That would have been probably about 60 to 100. And who owns that? And who's the person that gets that money? Is it like the, is it the like PMI publish, or whatever? The publisher and the record label. Right. So if you're gonna, and who was that in that case? You know, I don't know because we so didn't even pursue you're, you're the like, yeah, we're not. And, and so they, they came to you and they said, oh, this is how much? Uh, it was going to be about like 100,000. 100, and how yeah. many seconds of it? 10. 10, 10 seconds. seconds of a song, a famous song. Hundred thousand dollars, unbelievable. Yes. So, so the, they couldn't even try to work with you, or they just that was it. That's such a there's it's like hundred thousand dollars for ten seconds. Our film ends with a Lou Reed song. So I was going to say were, it's like the fe- <laughs> it's it's like the right. the film is yeah. So there was certain tracks that were like drop dead songs that we needed for the film, and uh, which was which was Lou Reed's. Yeah, Lou Reed. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it is the closing song, and we knew we were going to. You'll have spend to money that. on that one, and how yeah. much was that one? It, uh, probably shouldn't say. Yeah, you probably would say, but it was, but it was, it was definitely <laughs> worth, you know worth it. Sony yeah. and Light in the Attic Records, who cleared both sides of the song, were great to work with us. Um, they're very sympathetic to independent film. They know exactly the position we were in, and once the Lou Reed estate cleared this use, you know, it was Aww. kind of blessed. That's lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, so a happy ending. So I, I feel like when the filmmaker, I mean, when the musicians are around, and in the '60s they might not be, but you could kind of sometimes you can actually reach out to them and be like, "Hey, it's an indie film. Can you, you know?" And they just might try, right? Just try, just try, yeah. and it might find work, a good music not. supervisor yeah. that will fight for your project. That's really the name of the game. Yeah. So, how did you get into this? Well, I love music and independent film. Two historically ripped off groups of people. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anything I can do to rewrite that history is my wow. feel like a good fight. That's to take a good up. purpose in life, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. So you know your purpose. How? Did, when did you figure out that that's what you wanted to do? And that was I always. You just I mean, always knew. Yeah, I hear music and I see films even when I'm not watching or listening to things. Are so. you the type of person that like? Because I'm a complete. I was a DJ for like 20 years. And yeah. I'm completely obsessed with playlists. Yeah. I mean, I have. I started it age you know for a playlist for my daughter yeah and then they battle over the playlist i mean you know they switched it up but i would put you know i put some things on there some of the things i really love was mary poppins like the original soundtrack is just unbelievable she's still when when you have a seven-year-old that'll listen to you know julie andrews and mary (laughs) poppins and it's still cool yeah you got it you have made a winner i mean that is that music is incredible i mean the orchestration the melodies the song for some reason they're just still cool to her she's seven yeah and it was it's mary poppins from 1960 something incredible and so you know i'll put little things i mean you know and i'll put you know um it's it's there's so many different old school classics that i'll put in there and sometimes she's like and it doesn't sound for whatever reason mary poppins that's the only thing and then everything else is like you know whatever pop music from the era and people nowadays like they make this thing called kids bop and they take old classic songs and then little kids re-sing them to make yeah. them sound kitty and i'm like where's the original this is it i'll change it and she'll delete there's some it off gems the playlist. in kids bop but there is some- <laughs> i wouldn't rule it out you know <laughs> no it's true it's true yeah um yeah great but we're so, just thrilled to be yeah, here so tell us about the featherweight and and so it, it was kind of a last minute um <clears throat> addition to a film festival with a, a lot of films and yeah. we, when we saw it and we heard about it we were like super excited yeah so tell us about i mean you know the director and the producer and whatnot they're here doing a q a right correct yeah, yeah. so um, and it's on sunday yes robert uh Kalodny, the director will be here bennett elliott the producer steve block the writer adam Kalodny, our cinematographer Naomi Wolf Latcher, our costume designer, will all be here. Wow. So yeah, we're this is our US premiere. This is your US premiere, and it yeah, premiered at TIFF. In Venice. In Venice. Sorry, in Venice. Venice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, most of us are based out of New York City. So coming up here. Did you go to Venice or did you guys well, of course? Tell yeah. me what that was like. I always like it was surreal. Um yeah. good day to wear sunglasses. <laughs> but, it wasn't raining like we, no, we got was, lucky though, because we had three days of beautiful weather and then you guys came and it yeah. started raining. 
no offense. But. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> we tend to bring the drama. You bring so. the drama. <laughs> the film, so tell us a little bit about, like, get people excited about the film. And It's a beautiful film. Um, I think you can find an entry point to a number of details in the story, mm -hmm. whether you like boxing or complicated masculinity. <laughs> uh, but it really, really is a gorgeous film. And um, we're just stoked to be here yeah well yeah. welcome and and, you. and you know woodstock have you been to woodstock you've been to woodstock because you live I've, in new york city i've come for shows yeah. at colony right and love colony <laughs> we love colony. did you go there last night i did was I it did. fun yeah forest yeah. was great the videos were great so yeah we're just having a great time yeah. ever records on tinker street don't sleep I know, on it right don't it's sleep on that it's an incredible spot and we had dinner at good you just, night you just tapped into all the music history and you know it's funny because yeah. Every time I talk about people that love music, I talk about the director's cut of the Woodstock uh, Music Festival. Iconic. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, it's like the director's cut. It's like when you watch director's cuts, it's like you have to absolutely love something. And this is just all it is, is really just footage of live performers. And it's all this like crazy blues music at the time. Yeah. There was it's such an interesting sound yeah. that was happening. And it yeah. was it was literally like yeah. all blue blues music, but a lot of, you know, I mean, there was people of color too, but it was a lot of like, you know, white people at the time that were really influenced, but they sound, I mean, they were incredible. Yeah. I mean, you had unbelievable, the sound just, and it was just, they were coming from such an amazing place. So, you know, that's Woodstock has just got that history and that vibe and it's never going to die even we love it. it just can't because of that it's I mean, in the DNA it's in the DNA <laughs> it's in the DNA yeah so I feel like this is a fitting home for us to premiere in, in the, the States. US in the and States. um yeah thanks well, thanks to everyone luck. at the festival and we'll see you there thanks we'll see you me. at the film All thank right, you take care take care And we're still live at the Woodstock Film Festival, the 24th. You guys, come on. We are our next guest. We we did a super fun clip. She's a composer, too, I remember. And we just were talking. That was the music supervisor from Featherweight. Did you talk to him? He, they had a, a $400,000 music cue for the film. And he just sat there and told me how they figured out how to, how to like, switch out the songs so that it wasn't four hundred thousand dollars that's like the most interesting story i've ever heard i was like oh, wow God. 100 is one hundred thousand dollars for 10 seconds and i'm not, I'm not gonna I'm probably we probably should i don't know if we even should have said that but i'm not gonna say the song again in case somebody <laughs> said but i don't know if he was supposed to give me that information but it was like 10 seconds one hundred thousand dollars for one for one that's song. a really expensive 10 seconds yeah but and I thought, oh my God, is very it is. Important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can start with that. So let's talk about you guys. Tell us, tell us your names. Give us a little bit of introduction and tell us about the film. I, and I, I, I connected with you because I'm a music person too. So I know you're composed, but you're the director. Yes. And tell, and you, it screened yesterday, did it not? It screened yesterday. Yes. And it's screening tonight. And it's screening tonight. Yes. And what is the name of the film? Because we're it's not even saying it. Gates. It's called At the Gates, it's right? Rosendale right. Theater, 8.15 p.m. Perfect. Okay. So At the Gates, tell us how it went yesterday. So special. I mean, this is our U.S. premiere. Congratulations! And to be in Woodstock and the cinemas here are, are like holy because they're they're charming and gorgeous, and the audience really loves movies, cinephiles, and so what better place to yeah. to, to launch a, a movie like? And this? how did you had a Q and A? Mm -hmm. What did you guys into get into in the Q and A? Was there any like super juicy moments that we can kind of relive? Oh, I mean, I think Augie was very sweet to point some questions in my direction because I think oftentimes film music is something that sits sort of slightly beneath the surface, right? Our job Subconscious, as, that's what I call it. Yeah. yeah, our job is to really elicit a sense of collective feeling. And, mm -hmm. you know, you sort of play with different levels of outgoingness, of intimacy. And I think in a film like this, what we really wanted to do was allow the music to kind of permeate the air. We wanted it to be a part of the experience more so than we wanted it to be something that, that was immediately yeah. recognizable. And then when you get to the end of the film, really allowing you know our big strings to come in, we really open up the score um, from the perspective of breadth right. um, as as the, the story itself unfolds and we allowed the music to follow along. And so that. tell us just on a technical level, what's your process? Like you, are we talking about we're in Logic doing some strings and then you get the actual people to come <laughs> and play question. them? Yeah. What are we doing? So, yeah, we were working with a small budget. Right? Yeah. So that that was one of the questions yeah. of how do you make the score sound good considering that we don't have what was the budget? budget? Can I ask that? 
Is that did not... about ten thousand okay. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I made the choice to bring in live oh. players. That was an important thing yeah. for me to do. Yeah. Um, well, we couldn't bring in that many. No. So we had to be selective. Over yeah. Here. We had to be really selective, um, you know, really think about the types of players and the malleability of those those players within those sessions. Um, but all of it was done in Pro Tools. Um, and I think the way that my process really works is starting out with some kind of basic ideas, right? What are the mm -hmm. fundamental stylistic um, pillars of the film? And what I do is create um, one massive uh, Pro Tools session. And then I say, all right, here's a stereo mix of this. All right, Augie, I know you like this cue here. What if we stuck it over here? Now, what does that tell us about the overarching dramatic structure of the film? And also, how does it inform our understanding of the validity of both the idea dramatically and musically speaking? And then it's a quick way for Augie then to have the space to say, I like this, I don't like this. What if this started a little bit sooner? What if this started a little bit later? And we're talking about one massive file for the, how long is the film? 97 so you're minutes. talking about a 97 minute Pro Tools files. Are you breaking breaking it up in just right. sequences, or how do you? So I have one. I have not the to film. get technical. I don't know if anybody <laughs> no, cares about that. this, yeah. but it's just interesting. I have the film in one session, and right, then what I'm session. doing is that each individual cue also has its own Pro Tools session, each and then I'm bouncing stereo its... mixes. Right. Okay. And then I'm importing all of those stereo mixes into this overview session because what I found right. is that part of what my responsibility is as a composer to my director is to allow him really the opportunity to, to say, hey, I like this, I don't like this, move this over. Can we think about this here? What if this came out sooner? And my ability to do that quickly and effectively in order to show him in real time um, the effectiveness of the ideas, um, I just find that that's a really, a really quick, easy, painless way um, to do that. And then after the fact, I'll look at those edits that I did in that session and then bring those edits that we did in the overview session then into the individual sessions themselves. Wow, that is super high level. But I mean, you can only do that in Pro Tools. I mean, that's the only piece of software you could do that. I mean, that's what everybody does massive mixes in. I mean, there's no other piece of software. Am I correct? I mean, it's... Logic is slightly... Well, that's more like you would do the queue. You would do the queue and then you would maybe import it into... Pro Tools. I mean, you can, you know, or or sort of compose it in Logic and put it into Pro Tools. But at the end of the day, it has to be. I Pro think Tools. it really depends on. You're going to mix probably in Pro Tools yeah. just because it's you the most to. conducive yeah. to working with audio. Um, I and I I used to work in Logic, um, but I find that um, Pro Tools is so much more of conducive course, for the yeah. creative process as it relates to moving session data from one place to exactly. another place, the making overall, those cuts, working with yeah. players, prepping those sessions, and then sending it off to the mixing engineer. So it all wow. makes that um, much more digestible. And my apologies. <laughs> I know you're That's taking so over, but I, I'm, as a woman, I'm, there's hardly anybody that does this. Yeah. Like, very few people, women do Pro Tools. And I had known a few that did, and I was just like, because I tried to open up Pro Tools. I actually tried to do, <laughs> I tried to get training in New York at the like New York Film Academy, like whatever Pro Tools thing, because somebody paid for me to do it. And I was like, I can't, it's so small. Like the, I couldn't yeah. see, I was blinded by it. And that's why you, what do you have? Like two gigantic monitors? I do. Yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> and then you drop down the little arrow and there's like all these layers of oh little things. Are you looking at it like, what is uh, this? You I, gotta... try to, I try to look at the screen that only has the picture on it, but then she like clicks a button over here and suddenly there's like a thousand and things more, than the, more than the picture editing. And I'm like, wow, I and don't even know how to play piano. Like the, yeah. You know, and then, but, so you're, you're. So how does, how does a director give notes exactly. on something that's musical? It's a yeah, really how do you tough. Do that? I'd say it's, it was, it's one of the more challenging collaborations for for first filmmakers because you're not speaking the language of of video anymore and moving images it is music and uh, uh, not all directors are are trained in in music right and and what is your background do you have is this the first time you've taken on something like this with this kind of composition piece? yeah i mean yeah. what's what's amazing about julia and her score is brilliant in at the gates and something that we're really proud of yeah. I came to her with the finished film. There was no. You came to her with the finished. Yeah, film. there was no music on it, and I thought that you maybe edited. It, wait, so you edited it without any sound, with no music. The editor didn't. originally, I was like, I want every scene to work without any music, and maybe there is no music in this movie. I was. What are the what are movies that have no music? Because there are a few. Yeah, well, no country for old. No country for old men. Has That's it. Cues. It has two cues. In it has two music cues, but that is an incredible film, and I remember going, "Wow, this is the one film because they're in." The middle, you know, they're in where I'm West Texas in the middle of nowhere, and it's just there's no sound, it's just like the wind, it's all sound design, Amazing. it's so sound design, but it works, it worked, but it's crazy to make a film without music. But yeah, go ahead. I want to say that I came to her and I, I said, 
I don't know if there's music in this movie. It, it kind of plays without it. And I was like, maybe we have 20 minutes of music in this project. The final, the final film has 45 minutes of music and it's done so brilliantly and seamlessly with the movie and enhances the, the relationship the viewer has to the experience in such a great way. And, and we're so lucky that we got to collaborate on this together. Yeah, I think a lot of it too was that it was still important for me to hear what Augie was saying when he said, I want minimal music, right? Or I'm thinking no music. So I'm taking that into consideration with the way that I'm engaging with the score. And then it was a question of, have we overplayed? Have we underplayed? And I think we really, the goal really was to make the music seamless with picture, that we really wanted music embedded in story to the extent that the film became an experience as opposed to music over here and picture over here. Right. We wanted those things to really be married together. So like if you're, let's like let's say it's like, you know, the first 10 pages of a script or first 10 minutes of, of a movie, all these things happen, you introduce all this stuff. What is it like you're, when you say you're putting music in there that's not necessarily background, but sort of like more in the middle? What is it that you're doing? I mean, how does it, I mean, is it with certain string instruments? Like, what is it that you're doing to tell a story with music? I mean, that's a hard... So, I think, I think the question that you're asking is one about vocabulary. Vocabulary. Right? What is the vocabulary, stylistically speaking, um, of, of the film? And so this, we knew we really wanted to be drone-oriented. So actually, oh, some of the, interesting. the original things was actually, um, I had been improvising with a friend um, in Ableton, um, and then had taken some of those sounds, those clips that were typically about a minute to a like minute Like the arpeggiators that makes the drone thing or what it was just what, what, you know what, what if is, we put this into here and what if we put this sound plug design in here? ish 100 kind of and stuff, then yeah. what i would do is i would take it's kind of an obscure program i, I know would take, um, this is this is blowing my mind right now i would I take uh you're like look at you you're like what the I would, I would take like minute, minute and a half long clips, drones of that, and I would put it into this program called DSP Quattro, which was shown to me. I studied sound design on this yeah, guy Steve Tabalone I can tell, you for, know, for years. And so it's a really, it's a great way to create a clean loop because then what I would do is throw it into Omnisphere, which does not allow you to loop things. Because the question was, can I now make this texture playable? Yeah. Right? So that then I can sign adapt it. it to the MIDI notes mm -hmm. and you stuff. You know, you put a little mod wheel mm -hmm. on it so you can get mm -hmm. a really clean mm -hmm. entrance and exit. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so it just slowly and then, fades and then it was just a matter of can we just you know sometimes all lift, music wants lifting. to be is a step up from silence yeah because you just want it to sit in the air so that again it really is a part of the experience my job how i understand my job is to always be working in service of the film wow so again it's always measuring okay did i go too much over did i go mm -hmm. too much under mm -hmm. so a lot of it started with a lot of that sound design stuff and it wasn't until kind of getting to the end that i said okay i want strings and in this case because we had a small budget it was really just kind of wow. saying all right so it's minimal I... string players you just came in and but it was mostly sound design it was mostly two or three cues I think we had three cues wow. and all at the end of the film that had strings in it because that was what was appropriate to I, I, I to imagine. to the film. And you know, I think similarly speaking, a lot of it was drones up until these moments of humanity where you get these small moments of humanity um, string chords, right? The, the harp it always makes you, or if you're whatever, it always it's, it's like it tickles your something, you know, and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I have a little chilly chills. But yeah, you got to lift people out of the darkness because I'm sure. As the story goes, you have you enter the struggle, and then you're like at the lowest point, and then the music will be like, no, 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 brings you back into the light, you know. So the, tell us about the. the you can't the give us the, the whole premise of the film. I, I understand, but just give us a little bit more about the film, like the story. I'll, I'll tie it back into the yeah. music because the film is it's a great mystery, and it's a it's a thrilling movie where it's a a mother and son from Salvador who are living who are hiding in their employer's house in los angeles from the police and so it's about these two families as they're going through this crisis together and the mistrust that they begin to have of one another and so just how the movie kind of lures the viewer in and starts to have them second guess if they believe in what's really happening uh the music kind of very slowly i think percolates inside the viewer percolates brings too. them in to the viewing experience and just like in the film there's a big explosion that happens amongst the characters and the, the music uh really comes into full force and in the last reel of the film we we use a lot of the strings and all all the kind of pieces that we set up all climax together in what what is a really effective ending 
Well, I mean, sound is everything in frequency. I mean, people are getting more and more into it. Like I studied solfregio frequencies. I don't know if you have any idea what that is. I don't. But look it up. I'll just leave it there. You can watch this later and look that one up. Um, but yeah, basically you're talking about, you know, working together on with limited, you know, resources and able to just kind of like take it to the next level. You just like upped your production value by like a hundred percent. You know, you're, you, 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 I don't know if this is your first time film, but tell us about, you know, it's just your, how many films have you guys made? Obviously it's your Both of our first. first. That's what I thought I was going to, I just was just going to yeah. guess <laughs> without even researching, but as first time filmmakers, you just completely nailed it, obviously. And you're you're you know you're you're able to like work with somebody elevate it and now you've got something that you were like oh it was maybe needed music maybe didn't and now you it's like that production value goes up so then you start enter now you're entering into the world of like higher level films you know because now you have this extra level of meta layers to it and but it's subtle but that's what that's what shifts films up from just like oh it's an indie film you know to that le level, you know, and so now you're at the Woodstock Film Festival, you know, and you, you probably got more festivals to go after this one. Is that your plan or what's happening? The movie's coming out in uh -huh. theaters on November 3rd wow. in New York, in LA. Okay, so you guys are at the Savannah Film Festival. Good, Savannah October. Film Festival. And then what are you going to do after this film has its year? Are you guys going to come together and work on another film? Because it sounds like you've got some synergy. We're like, <laughs> just a little bit of synergy we grew up just, together. Oh, y'all are all oh, your your childhood friends. We, we grew there we up go. literally next door to one another. Where? Where are you guys from? Uh, in Santa Monica. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so, so the film takes place in Los Angeles. Yeah. This is an LA film. LA we're, film. We're, we were born and raised there. We. Um, I think it, it's funny how. How did this happen anyway? How did the project start? And how did you? You know, I don't know if you just give us a little bit of background for a first time filmmaker. How did you make a film like this? Like, how did it all come together? I would say that our film is a great example of a first time filmmaker. Not that it's, that it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really accomplished project and is really strong, but the process of getting it made was, I went to film school. I met a bunch of really close friends in, who were really good at producing cinematography production mm -hmm. design. And it was because of those friendships that I was able to do this project wow. because almost every department head other than Julia was, were friends or, or collaborators that I met school. at AFI. Wow. And, and what is AFI that's... It's not that it's, it's called America. It's the American Film Institute, Institute in, in okay. Los Angeles. Yeah. And these, these small projects, you need uh, collaborators who you have a trust. You're, it's run and gun style filmmaking because you got to do low things budget, fast. No low budget. Yeah. And, um, Ten thousand dollars is pretty healthy for like a, you know. I know. Well, we knew we needed. To I mean, I spent ten thousand dollars on my feature film in twenty fifteen, like literally. Like I don't even know how we did that. But it was terrible. I mean, it, I mean, what the film wasn't terrible, but it was terrible in the sense that we would try to do something like that. Like you need to, you know, you need to, if you're gonna make a film, like get some money together. Like don't try to, you know. But I mean, at least you were able. So how were you able to get? funds together that's my other question for a first-time filmmaker you know this is a it's a chamber thriller this story it all a lot of it takes place in this one location where two family sense. two families are hide, one family's hiding in the house of another family so just doing that one um, location it, takes it down it tremendously it down. <laughs> wow and you but were able to pull a that great off. mystery in this movie that I think helps it not feel like you're just stuck in one place, like yeah, the black box theater the, thing, where you're just there the whole time, and it's just a black screen, it's inside. a black box. Yeah, you're you were able to really get so, creative. Sometimes the limitations will actually mm -hmm. push it into another place. I think also what Augie did so well is that he gave all of us an opportunity. I had never done a feature film before. I know for a lot of us, Jacob, the amazing editor on the film, he gave us an opportunity, and I think that's what so many young people are looking for these days is just an opportunity to say I know I can do this give me an opportunity to, to flex my muscles and I'm not going to let you down and I think that what you did as a leader on this project is say I'm going to inspire you all and encourage you all and everyone put their best foot forward and I think you did an excellent job as it relates to putting a team together because when you're encouraged by a director it makes all the difference in the world and so everybody I think made put their best foot 
foot forward and say we're willing to go above and beyond that whatever the you know financial outcome of this is is not nearly as important as the ability to say let us work together and let's see what it is that we're capable of doing as a team yeah i mean that's un it's unusual a lot of people get really stressed when you're a director and you kind of snap at people and get really kind of freaked out because it's such an intense thing. So I hope you, you know, have a long <laughs> career <laughs> of working in a positive environment. Cause I mean, I think we've all been a part of yeah. things where people are flipping out and what happened? The whole shit blew up, you know? So, um, you know, that's beautiful that you're able to put people together and, and do that. Is there, you know, things in the works? I mean, obviously you put this film together and you're like, you got a year to go to ride this, but do you have other projects that you imagine? Did you grad, sorry, did you graduate from yes, school? Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you guys doing next? You know, I'm, I'm writing. Uh, You're a screenwriter as well. I'm a screenwriter writing, so uh, working on fundraising for the next movie. Wow. So I can't talk about it yet. Yeah, but, but what about the fundraising process? That's what I was trying to get into. So how did you fundraise for this other film? Like, how right did you, now, at the gates, how did you? At the gates was, was through mostly friends and family and produce, they, other producers, friends wow. and family. And me did you have a short money. film or anything done before that so that they yeah. would know your level of expertise? Well, at film or, school, you have to make all these short so films. So you have, how many short films did you make at I film school? Five yeah, I heard that, like I have, we had NYU interns working with us and they literally had to do like a short film of like a month yeah. or something. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just churning out projects and also- <laughs> Trial by on, fire. <laughs> you're working on other people's projects. Yeah, that's part, I think that's part of it. It wasn't like just your own film. It was like, but you're, you know, you're highly involved in someone else's film, but one film a month or something. And I was like, Julia has a, has a TV series that she- is I could the, tell you are composer. so made for TV. I'm sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> wow. Dude. Are you on TV, but you just made them? You should no, be, no. you should have a YouTube channel where you're explaining everything you're talking about because it's like people love this stuff. Like yeah. I go on there all the time and I get tips and tricks from just things they just geek out on technical stuff like that, like the Pro Tools, whatever, like all that stuff. Like people love that. You should just have your own YouTube channel where you're just like, this is what I do and this is how I mix a film and like da da da, da. I'm telling you. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not too I, I'm so, and Well, you might not have the time either because that's an ungodly amount of time. But it, it has to like be integrated into your life so that you don't like, you know, spend your whole time making content for your YouTube channel. You have to actually make, you know, music for films. So that's, that's what you do. But, that's yeah. my favorite thing. To do. Yeah. And, and I'll give you hey, the opportunity. The it's called Feud Capote and the Women. I, I, yeah, I hope I'm allowed. I hope I'm allowed oh, to say that. Snap. I mean, I yeah. don't know. I'm not <laughs> see this. It might just be us. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, later we'll have this archive so you can go watch it and they might get mad at you. That's what I was saying. I was like, oh, we said some things in here, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know if anyone's going to go back to a three hour YouTube stream and like make sure that information. I was like, the guy's like, it was $100,000 just the 10 minute queue. And he said the name of it. Am I going to say it again? And he's like, oh, shit. I don't think I was supposed to say that. But I'm like, no, I don't really don't think anyway, you know, whatever. This is pretty obscure. Which I, which is another I thing I love about Woodstock Film Festival. To the, to the Woodstock Festival. <laughs> We're excited about it. Hey, it's, we, we love, we love like the level of, you know, just, it's not obscurity at Woodstock, but it's like non-pretentiousness, but still yeah. people know about it. I mean, it's like Woodstock's famous in general I mean, for being we Woodstock. So, but yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you for coming oh, on. Thank you so much. All the best. And we 100% have to stay in touch because you guys are oh, awesome. Oh, 100%. And guys. thank you so much for your interest. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you want to come back and talk about Pro, Pro Tools. Tools. I'm just yeah, kidding. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear about Pro Tools. We're going to do an hour long. Yeah, just about. about Pro just and you're like, like the behind the scenes right. of Pro Tools. Is, it is the pretty. Shortcuts, it's really interesting, though. It really is. I mean, honestly, like, because I, I, I mean, just to be real, when people finish a film, it has to get mixed. And it's an incredible process to mix a film. Like I'm not, I'm talking about the mixing of the vocals, the audio, the everything, put the sound design and they put the music in it. That is the most intense part of a film. And it, it could really F up your project and just lower the production value. if You don't do it right. You know, we'll have to bring Moy, our lovely mixing engineer next time. Exactly. Absolutely. That guy yes. has to be on this show. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> you would love him. If you want to know about Pro Tools, Moises Ignacio Garcia. So you were working guy. with someone else too. Was it wasn't just you. You didn't mix it. I did not mix it. No, 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 no. Well, Which, you put together an amazing team of, I don't know how you did this. I think it's it's mostly realizing that I couldn't, I could, there's no chance I could do it myself. <laughs> just to find, I, just, I mean, you live in LA, I guess friends. everybody's like down the street, like, oh, I, you know, I do this and, you know, because it's the nature LA, of there's it. so many people in it the is. business. Cool. So. Well, you guys have a great time. Thank Ari, you so much. It was an absolute, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Take so care. Best of luck at the screening. Thank you. 
And we're still live at the Woodstock Film Festival 24th uh, annual. And we have several folks left that are going to join us. I'm still looking for Adam Shartov. Is Adam possibly available? Hi. Welcome. So we've got three folks that are going to join us. I don't know if you could possibly Nick pull a chair over for them so we can make it happen around here. And I'm going to scoot over. Welcome. So are you guys, is this, is this Virginia? Yes. I'm Katie. Lovely. I'm going to scoot over. So we got a wide angle lens camera here with just one mic because of the nature of it. So see if you guys, and then I'm just going to put you right front and center on it. You got, I'm Katie. Thank you so much. Costafina? Costafina. Costafina. But with an hat. And I am uh, ben. ben, thank you, Ben. So you guys, tell us all about your film. You have the short film. Us, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the audio, um, you guys might want to scoot up just a little bit more closer to the mic. Um, I'm kind of turning it. Luckily, there's nobody like, talking in the back, but I'm just going to put it right here for you guys. So are we live right now. Yes, we're yes. live on YouTube. We are live, live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was and, allowed to struggle with the language. Yes. Okay. Great. And it's funny. What language do you speak? Spanish. Okay, so I, yo hablo un poquito español, pero nobody here speaks. I was just on Radio Kingston, uh, hablando en español totalmente in, for Radio Kingston. They have a Spanish show, and you guys should have been on. We were looking for Spanish speakers. Ah, I can do it. Oh, but they left. Oh, it was so hard to find some Spanish speakers. It, Argentina. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Welcome. So, Welcome. Is this your first time to Woodstock? Yes. La primera. It's not tiempo? our first time. Okay. We came here in 2020 with a feature film called American Thief. Mm -hmm. And then. That was a cool experience because it was during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And this is our second time back as filmmakers. But yeah. now yeah. today we're here for Virginia's second yeah. short film <laughs> called The Simple Stone with her first premiering at uh, Toronto International. And, uh, so thanks. So we're here to celebrate uh, celebrate a simple story. So tell yeah. us about the simple story and give us a little background on you. Okay. And you might want to just well, he yeah. introduced it really good because I was traveling to Toronto mm -hmm. uh, for the other festival with uh, my other short film, and then we were really relaxed. We were enjoying. No, it, it was my first time in New York, and uh, Jose, my sister, started talking about her, her friends and also the friends of, of Ben, that is like a community of actors. And we were enjoying really much and really spontaneous. I say, okay, the next time that I come, let's shoot something. But then four, four or six months later, yes. I had to come. So I say, okay, let's do a documentary about you, about your group and everybody. But then I realized that everybody was living in different parts. No, they, they, some people, no, no, they, some people, they used to, some, so some friends lived in New York, but then they relocated to LA and we were all spread out before the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I say, okay, I will write a fiction. So I have really few time to write a fiction. It has to be something that uh, I can do it like by myself. It's not complicated, blah, blah, blah. And I start writing something that it was my first idea. I have to, to, to say that it was the first idea that it's like... Sometimes the first one is the one. It's the purest. <laughs> I didn't it have comes. time. Yeah. So it, it was like playing uh, with believing in something or not. Believing uh, in, in this case is uh, this group of actor believe in a stone that give the power that give them uh, the talent the talent no for 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 elixir for the to success mm -hmm. success elixir yeah. like the like a crystal power tool exactly. type yeah. of thing so yeah. That's, yeah that's that's my daughter's seven and she's obsessed with you know like Harry Potter and you know magical but so a simple stone yes okay yes. yeah exactly. And, and also, uh, when you do a project, you always have to uh, believe no, in this project. And I, so I play with this idea. Okay, I will write all days believing in this project and something will positive, happen. Positive, positive, positive thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, positive thinking. And when we were shooting, it was, there were many, it, it was much bigger than I could do. So it was, it was really chaotic. 
But I always have this feeling or try to have this feeling about believing in what we were doing and everything will be, yeah, embracing the chaos and everything will, will be, will resolve, will be mm -hmm. resolved. Will be resolved. Yeah. yeah. So I think in the process we had, there was a mix of some documentary things because we work also with really close to their own, no, no character, la personalidad de cada uno, to their main idea. Group dynamic uh, yeah. and individual dynamic you were talking about, you were talking about playing and just to kind of provoke Lift, you. I, I want to say it's not us, it's us it's, lifted, yeah. the characters. Yeah, kind of turned up the dial on a few idiosyncrasies and we all were down to play. And I think, Virgie, you were playing with our dynamic, but heightening it as though as though to make it even more quirky in a way yeah and also in a way that they could um like have fun enjoy and enter to places that they decide uh, and it it was not i remember sometimes are you talking uh, how ben is going to do this or how my character no it's your character if you want to introduce the things of ben it's fantastic, but only the things you want to play with, no? So it, all the time we were with this dynamic about mm. friends, colleagues, partners, yeah. no? Well, yeah, and something that you were sharing, maybe you could talk a little bit about, was how even though the production was so big, it was seven days in New York with basically a one-person show here with Virginia and then getting help no. from DP and from, from all of us producing, but from a filmmaker perspective, coming in and you were talking about embracing the chaos and, she just, and she talking just, about how that gave more freedom. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah so that, we were just talking about that. Sometimes the limitations can actually pushes the artistic form somehow. Yeah. And you would think it's the opposite, but for whatever reason, that's how kind of creative creativity goes because it's like people with huge budgets on films, they can blow the film exactly. and ruin Absolutely. the film. I'm thinking of this film, it was like the Indian director, and I just thought, oh my God, I could tell he was trying to do a Bollywood film, but it's an American film. Um, I can't think of, which one? No, it was a different one. It's a, it, it was, it's like a, it's adapted after, I think like a children's book. But anyway, I could tell that he must have just gotten so much money and something went wrong, you know, but it was cause, you know, so if you have a limited amount of, you know, resources of course that's stressful but they can also like really impact the artist and like the way that your process is mm -hmm. you know and it can make it uh it can actually either go really wrong or it can actually go really well in your case obviously it went really that, well uh, each project has like the the own style no in this in this project was like spontaneous a really spontaneous. It's kind of like so, synchronicity, spontaneity, uh, but then you had a script, but then you're giving you guys, it's like a little bit of improvisation, am I feeling? Well, like you were giving speak, them. I, I really don't speak uh, English. You really speak good. amazing. <laughs> uh, but but you have to see, when I was directing, I I was, uh, 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 and they had to interpret something. They didn't know what they had really to do, but then I catch some things about they, what they were doing. Uh, and that was the the way we could we could uh, work. Uh, but f uh, the the process was as I didn't uh, re I, I couldn't write in, in English, so I write something that Ben check it. But then with e each actor or in each scene, we uh, like do a, an investigation mm -hmm. you, you moment a, about dialogues yeah, you had, you had and then I, I record mm -hmm. and then I mm -hmm. uh, transcribe. Right. Right. Wow. That is, that, that was a method yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that I learned there mm -hmm. and I, I will continue using mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. it's really good and it's really good when you want to mix a little about uh, natural things right. with uh, fiction. Right, you know, that right. I'm really interested so you're in. saying, so I'm getting a little bit, so you're saying you're kind of mixing a documentary style, like real life people having mm -hmm. an interaction with the scripted, which yeah. I'm very interested in too. I think that's a, there's a whole movement right that kind of happening, I feel like that, where yeah. there, it's, it's an interesting thing because documentary is now so popular. Documentaries, you know, we did, I did a whole podcast with an incredible, a documentary filmmaker, Nancy Bursky, and she passed recently, very sad.
But she was saying how when she started, nobody, do documentaries were not popular. Remember at a time when nobody yeah, watched yeah. documentaries? It wasn't a thing. This festival is like, you know, very much yeah. documentaries. I mean, there's certainly scripted things too. Yeah. But I, I, she probably was really attracted to the style of what you guys were doing when you're mixing those those things. And I, it's very exciting to me. I think it's so interesting, you know, mm -hmm. to mix and blend those things. It's so funny because I would describe the short film as a fable more than it. It's so it has some kind of documentary. There is some perspective. I don't know, but it's a fable for me. Yeah. Um, Wait, I wanna... But in the sense of using documentary, and well, I think it's more in the sense of like you're really, you're saying to play the part only that he identified with, like you wanted him to only identify with that part of the character. So there's some reality yeah. to it in a sense, yeah. which is what I'm saying. It's exactly. very That's small, exactly. but it's it that kind it of is. thing. As well as the relationships that Virginia kind of uh, created within us, because it all came from the spontaneous conversation anyway about our dynamics so that was kind of that plays a role into it as and, well yeah Virginia kind of carried that spontaneity throughout the project which was really nice she I felt like you trusted that and instead of saying no to things or shutting things down she was always saying yes yes yes, 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 yes. and being courageous enough to <laughs> let her fall on her place let us Virginia has like, I don't know if you felt this, but Virginia has a really strong uh, sound background in audio yes. and directors yeah. ask Virginia to come and She's help tell their script through uh, how the sound can help tell the narrative. And sometimes to touch on Virginia's, uh, you say you were directing with like, uh, 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 sometimes I felt like my experience, she was directing us with sound. The sound. Oh no, my God. Yeah. That's been a theme throughout this language. whole podcast because we just had a compo we had a, a music supervisor and then a composer. And now you, and yeah. she, this composer before you have to speak with her, they were amazing. It was at the gates, but she was a she was trained sound designer. But then she as also was the composer for the film, and we just talked for about. 15 minutes about wow. sound wow. you should have heard the whole conversation yeah. but now of course yeah. you're talking about so share more because it's been like this whole sort of like okay, ongoing well, conversation um sound yeah, is to me sound, i'm so fascinated it's sound, everything sound for me it's also like an atmosphere and also for, atmosphere yeah atmosphere mm -hmm. no I, uh, I wasn't correcting it was no, that i'm okay. repeating it's really I, good because yeah, no. now people it's will great. understand it's the, you said it exactly how i said it you said <laughs> atmosphere but i was repeating it in the sense of it is it's a it's an ambiance an atmosphere and then we were talking about it's very subconscious yeah. but you can push it out of the subconscious and move it into a narrative. conscious yeah narrative so the, yeah. the thing is i i never um could tell a story i i, I always forget what is if you tell me what is the story about, okay, I forget, but I remember some parts that there is this atmosphere, heaviness, or, or lightness. this relationship yeah. between people. So I think I'm not so interested in, in, in stories. stories. I'm more interested in, in relationships and this kind of atmosphere that sometimes appear or sometimes they suggest you things mm -hmm. that you provoke you. Mm. Not that. That's a huge one. You speak yeah. English beautifully. I don't know how to say provoke in Spanish. Como se dice provocar? Provocar es lo mismo. Okay, no wonder. <laughs> and so, so it's so mysterious that 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 moment that you want to understand why. No, because mm -hmm. in that moment that you have an atmosphere, you mm -hmm. you cannot say what it's about. You cannot put words in that. But you want to understand why so many things happen to you at that moment. Mm -hmm. So why maybe you touch with this atmosphere. Maybe there it comes the story, but I cannot tell you mm -hmm. <laughs> which one. <is. laughs> and, and can you tell a little bit um, the, this metaphor of the dumb beetles? Because ah, I, yeah, the, the, that's the, really funny. From Egypt, so, the dumb beetles, exactly. the beetles. Yeah, yeah well, I know all about it. Our, yeah. <laughs> talking to the i don't know so it was like also spontaneous yeah i was trying to understand which was which was going to be the stone no of this uh, this group of actors they believe in a stone i searched i researched a lot of stone i have it in my hand I, stone, I, yeah. I i try and i feel different things but there was a moment that i i started investigating about uh, believing in things and I, what I was more catch, not attractive, mm -hmm, attracted, mm -hmm. were that uh, many amulets are like really, amulets, yeah. um, 
coming from really uh, ancient cultures or special places. Special like, places. For example, the the jade is coming. It say that it's the sperma. The jade, jade, jade. Sperma. Mm -hmm. of, I don't remember mm -hmm. what. But finally, I I find the, this beetle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. And, and yes, it's I, like ten. It's like ancient, ancient cultures really were connected to symbols. They lived more in a symbolic, like almost like a dream where the symbols were very powerful. And the the dung beetle, the jade dung beetle is like throughout many different cultures. It's not just Egypt, it's in Central no. America, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is the, the thing, yeah, the thing is that uh, we, we work with, with this dung beetle, like it was this is stone that they believe in jade and and I, I really get attracted that this sacred thing could be also the the, the most uh, ugly thing mm -hmm. for us no i i, I really uh, like a like, dung beetle it's like a it's yeah. ugly but it's sacred That's, but then yeah because of the, but also what i think it, for me was really interesting is that these dumb, dumb beetles um, lay their eggs in shit. Yes. And then they, they turn it into. Yeah. Exactly. And they pull those balls of push, push those ball of shit towards the sun. And then at some point, sometimes they roll back to them and then they have to push it again. It's like exactly like the myth of it's some, it's, Sisyphus. Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a. And it's like us pushing our projects. Yeah, I, I, it's a metaphor. I, I, it's a metaphor. I'm like, what is that word? Metaphor. Here we are. I'm speaking English, but metaphor. 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 <laughs> and then you push it three steps, and then it comes. I don't know six, and then you have to push it one, and then it's like, and that's. So it was the perfect symbol for you as yeah, the, for, for the, the creator. Work of the mm -hmm. artist, what we have to do all days, and and. Sometimes it's like, yeah. a, like our baby, and we love it, mm -hmm. and we hate it, mm -hmm. and and it's our shit also. Mm -hmm. and we have to carry with, and and it's part, it's part, and could be also the most sacred thing. Of mm, our that is so deep. So that, or that meta, was, as we say, yeah. meta, which is like it's a metaphor for yes. life, which is the deepness, that the layers in this. So in the piece, <laughs> tell us. So how long is this film? Ah, it's short. It's a short film, twelve minutes. Twelve minutes, and so it will be. It will be in the at five o'clock in the community center, Woodstock center. Community Center. Yep, we yeah. just the, I think the another filmmaker before this one's also in the same block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the portrait of yep, portrait, portrait, portrait of an artist. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's called the Simple Stone, and I'd say. Uh, for one of my favorite, although we're talking about these deep and ancient rituals, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I love about the way Virginia tells story is that there's always kind of a smirk and a sense of humor. humor. Not, also, like life, not taking herself so or her seriously. Work too seriously either. Mm -hmm. That there is a little bit of a wink wink to it, and I appreciate that in, mm -hmm. in your storytelling. But yes, it's a simple stone playing tomorrow, Saturday at 5 p.m. With a whole bunch of beautiful shorts, portrait um, of artists, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, this will be a beautiful, along yeah. Shorts with, we just uh, had um, about Ben Vereen, about Maria Schneider. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we had quarter to three, which yeah. quarter to three is incredible. We just had Issa, the oh. director here, that's also yeah, sure. part of the shorts. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Palestinian no, amazing filmmaker. Program. It really uh, is, and excited. we have amazing shorts at the Woodstock Film Festival. I mean, we have programmers that put together incredible, you know, films that connect, you know, and mm -hmm. so you might not be watching like a long two-hour film, feature <laughs> film, but you're getting like an amazing, beautiful yeah. plethora of and it's layered nice, And it's nice films. sometimes to see mm -hmm. how they connect with each other mm -hmm. because the programming done by Mayura and done mm -hmm. by Amanda for the shorts. Yeah, Amanda. Very, yeah, Amanda Nassim. Nassim. Um, um, Puts them together in a really nice, nice way, way, and somehow Very you see way. this connection, which, yeah. are, which are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, Amanda's amazing. Shout out to Amanda. She was also supposed to be on the podcast. At yes. some point she will be. And maybe she can talk more about how she puts her stuff together. But I'm so glad she selected your films. Yes, so are and we. if you guys continue to work together, all the best. Thank you know, you. and you're can a beautiful artist. Yes, yeah, say, say one last one little thing. Yeah. Something that is very also for me that it's very beautiful about the film. It's not only a bunch of friends. It's like in <laughs> There were a bunch of couples mm -hmm. together, yeah, almost like six, six couples. 
No, so yeah, and... you'll see in the film the ensemble is Josefina and myself, mm -hmm. a couple, Tony Torn and Leanne Brown, mm -hmm. and Alyssa Middleton and Clark, Clark Middleton. Middleton. Um, so it's a nice, nice group of couples, yeah. 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 And together. The last thing in between uh, the years we shot and today, we lost two of the characters. I mean, two of the actors, actors from the film, the two dear friends. Uh, Clark Middleton and Shadow Scuda. Um, so to be able to premiere here and celebrate with everybody, I think it's so important and we are so happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. We're so happy that you're here. And it sounds like only not only was the process therapeutic to make this film, but this process of being here and you know, you you had beautiful artists be a part of this and they passed on but they they left their you know they left their magic in the film so yeah, that's beautiful I mean, and to I, just add on to that in terms of it it takes a village and who helped out we'd be yeah. remiss and just not saying also like in post to a big shout out and, and thank you to brian divine and gigantic studios mm, jonathan and gray. jonathan gray at gray schwartz who yeah. really helped us uh and again of course woodstock myura yeah. and amanda, amanda. So thank beautiful you well thank you guys i appreciate it and we hope we see you next time maybe your next project the woodstock no, film festival if you guys all work together <laughs> and i'm glad so glad that we're we were able to help you guys with gigantic studios and everything happening in woodstock uh you guys are heading back to, to south america after this you're going to okay yes that's a long ride i'm so happy that you're here though yeah enjoy your time here it's a beautiful place yeah and hopefully see you tomorrow yes definitely i'm coming to that program yeah okay sure yep thank you take care <laughs> and we have bill plimpton lined up here yay bill thank you so much best of luck with your film thank you guys and that film you have to go see it sounds absolutely amazing <clears throat> and so we have bill plimpton he is the original og Original, original gangster. You can pick one. How about this one? Bill, I've never actually met you, but I'm Katie. We have having amazing conversations with filmmakers, and I'm wrapping it up with you. That's amazing. So happy for you to be here. So how are you feeling? Good, good, good. We had a screening uh, this morning. Let it well. go. A lot of uh, fans. Oh, my head. Yes, you have a ton of fans. You have so many fans. I like the green hat, though. You always well, rock, a, rock something. It's a cowboy colorful. Movie, so yes. I, to get into I like the guitar. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about like how you went. I mean, you're obviously a very famous animator. No, I'm not. You are. Bottom rung. He's just bottom rung. But tell us how you decided to make a feature film. Well, I've been doing it now for three years, I think. Mm -hmm. You've been working on this film for three years. Uh, no, seven years. Okay, seven years. But I've been doing animation mm -hmm. uh, since uh, 1990. Forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, each feature I do, I, I some are popular, some aren't so popular. But uh, it's an addiction. I, I can't stop uh, <laughs> drawing sometimes. In fact, I'll do a drawing for you if you had a piece. Let's of paper. do it, and let's just do it real quick on yeah. YouTube Live. He's yeah, gonna make yeah. do us a drawing. I'll I'm moving this over because it's just the two of us now. Let's do that. You have a piece of paper? Yes. We have a piece of paper and a pen right here. Or do you want to do it on oh, something yeah, hard? Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know this stuff. Okay, so it's a Western. And I start with this hat. His name is Sly, oddly enough. And uh, he's a cowboy that comes into a corrupt town from Oregon, actually, is where, is where I'm from. And he, uh, through his music, he plays slide guitar. And I used to play slide guitar, actually. And uh, through his slide guitar music, he's able to um, get rid of the corrupt elements of this beautiful town. Wow, the slide guitar is magical. Yeah, magical music. I mean, I think I think Woodstock would appreciate yeah. the message of this film, how, how music um, breaks the barriers and gets rid of the corruption and everything. So this is... This is Sly, something like that. I love the shadow over the eyes. You never really see his eyes mm -hmm. in the film. It's more of a... Uh, incognito. Yeah, incognito. Mystery man. I will give this to you. 
and you're gonna sign it. Woo! Yeah. What an honor. Yay. Can you see it? I'm gonna, it's hard to see. I that. know. We have some sort of, there it is. Now we can see it perfectly. Yeah. That's and what's your, And this is Slide. That's the name of the film. It is based off of this. This yeah. is the main character. And he's yeah. kind of like taking taking all the ugly things and making he's them. He's almost a Jesus wandering around the country, making people feel better and have a happier life. That's beautiful. So yeah. what is his challenge? Um, well, this town is so full of corruption that uh, he's got to... Sounds familiar. Battle. <laughs> yeah. But Maybe the cool the thing States. about the movie, this mm -hmm. is the really cool thing about it. It probably has more bad men than any other film. He has There's a, a catalog he gets. It's a killer catalog. And he opens it up to find killers to kill Sly. They want to get rid of him. So they keep ordering these killers, and every 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 time they do, uh, Slide is able to defeat them. Slide. We're talking about Slide. If those have just joined us, yeah. Bill Plimpton's character. <laughs> so. So it's probably like two hundred bad guys. Wow. Really evil. Teeth are rotten. You know, they got eye patches. They got scars all over their face. They're overweight, they're skinny, they're, you know, it's just like really the dregs of the world. Mm -hmm. And so they, so how long is your film? 80 minutes. 80 minutes. Wow. So you obviously have a beginning, middle, and end when you make a yeah, feature film. And it's every, a long film. Every drawing in it. Wow. How, did, how long? Drawings. I was about to say 30,000 drawings. Yeah. And then the technical side of it, like how they took your drawings and then how is it animated? Like how did that part well, work? How do you I do would, that? I would animate a scene on paper. I don't have my drawings. Uh -huh. I left them in the car. Oh, darn it. But yeah, darn it. Um, the uh, I would do all the drawings pencil on paper. Kind of similar to this, mm -hmm. and then uh, I would color it, and then it would be scanned. I don't want to bore you. Here. No, I'm. I. I mean, this They're is scanned, and then we just went on and on about sound design and music oh, okay. composition for like an 30 minutes, so we okay. can get into some details. So they, so you, so you do it old school. You, you literally scan, scan the drawing, the drawing and then what about all the in between? Composite. I mean, you're doing all the in between. The yeah. And then they're composited. composited. Mm -hmm. And then you edit it. So you just they just kind of put stuff in the background when yeah, you say well, composite. So you so you so they just disconnect the background from the foreground. Yeah, and, and then, then they, they use the compositing. They match it up. Wow. And so, what was part of this process that was the most difficult? Um, COVID. Right. Yeah. Well, that made it difficult that for everybody. Was really hard because uh, usually I self finance my films. Mm -hmm. and that's worked out. For me, okay. Just so, and when you say self finance, you also own it and can do whatever you want with it, which is lovely, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks for clearing that. <laughs> no, it's important. And, oh, trust me, I just made one of my first films that someone else now owns, and I was like, wow, that's a whole new thing for me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I like to finance my mm -hmm. films, but because of COVID, uh, the obviously the cinema stopped. Um, the, the colleges stopped. They used to invite me over there. Um, the um, internet stopped. The, the Comic Con stopped. And that's where I make a lot of my money. So I had to take a lot of outside work, uh, music videos, and, 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 and. What was the music video you did? Because I saw that. What was it? Uh, well, I've done a bunch of them. Uh -huh. What was that? The one that you did during the whole lockdown thing, you, uh, where you were. Excuse me. What was that one? It was about. It was a really cool film. Yeah. It was about gay. That's all right. We'll look it up. We'll look it up. Something about the lipstick. I'm yeah. terrible Revenge with the names of, too. Revenge of the lipstick. Revenge of the lipstick. Something like that. Something like that. It's really. And we could. How can we? We could just go to BillPlimpton.com, yeah. right, and watch all your stuff. And you're you're on Twitter. You're on Instagram. You like hold it down. You keep it going like on the internets, right? But you can go to BillPlimpton.com and see all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jackie Green. I did Jackie a lot, Green. I did a yeah. lot of Jackie Greens. Is he popular here in uh, Woodstock? It's funny because I never know what is popular. I only know what's like popular in my mind. I mean, I know reggae music is popular here because I really like reggae, but I don't know what else is popular. I mean, I think like folk music and things like that are popular, but I have no idea. So making the film, how many people worked on it with you? I know you said everything was shut down, so... but well, A it lot of people worked on it because we had yeah. to use interns to do the mm -hmm. coloring and the compositing and all that. For 30,000... How many did you say again? Drawings? 30,000 drawings. I don't do that. I right. can't do that. I'm you not, would just uh, burn out. Yeah. and yeah. So, um, 
have we had a lot of interns and helped they, out. When you say yeah. the interns, they scanned it and then they went into Illustrator or whatever piece of software and they like colored yeah. it in. Right, right, right. The layers of it. Okay. Yeah. So they took and, your line, line drawings yes. and then they colored it, but you would kind of be art director, sort of like, oh, do this or do that. Like, is that how it worked? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah pretty much. And um, then uh, we have a lot of uh, people who help raise money. What we did a couple of uh, 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 money raising things. Mm -hmm. Fundraising, yeah. It's, it's a whole thing, yeah. And then uh, we sold a lot of art to, yeah, your to art. raise money. So you, you, you also are going to. Aren't you gonna put? We're gonna. We're supposed to put one of your pieces of art, I believe, on eBay and sell it. That's right. Have you heard about that? Well, it's a poster. We, yes, we got to do that. That's 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 on our plate. So maybe we could plug that. So yeah, let's tell us, plug it. Plug it. Let's plug it. Um, so I ran into uh, Mira. Yeah, where? And uh, she's in town. She mm -hmm. comes to town occasionally. And I said, And wait, no. where do you live? And Chelsea in New York. Oh, so you're saying she came into New York City? Yeah, she, obviously. Yeah, okay. And I said, you know, I'd love to do another poster design. The, and, what, and we've, yeah, this is obviously the poster design for the film festival. It's no, 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 a, we I love it. We love it. But he's going to show something even better. Yeah. Every naked body. That's what you're going to say. Wow. I can't wait. Definitely. But this is my first poster that I did for. Yep, that's classic. Uh, that's yep, classic. you can see it. Look, because it's black and white. It's like coming through. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a classic. So I said I'd love to do another poster right. because I really love your festival. And, uh, so you, so you're saying that you approached her about this one, about this year's. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I said, Can I do another one? Oh, so you this approached one. her. That's fantastic. Yeah, Usually she's did. trying to, you know, wrangle somebody to do something. And she said, yeah. And I said, well, let me draw. I had an idea because I remember last time I was here, I went apple picking. God, that was fun. Isn't All it amazing? Strawberry picking is amazing, too. Have you ever done that? Well, I did that as a kid. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Before. It's a little messy. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was inspired me to do this beautiful woman. It's about to be that time, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Who is picking apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's, very, it's very different from my usual style. It's very delicate. Mm -hmm. Almost... It's um, very minimal pastel colors. Mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah. Minimal pastel colors. Yeah. yeah. So I think I, I mean, love the letters too because I know we were all like, yeah. do the letter. And that was like a whole thing, I'm sure. But we were like, yeah, it, was. It, it was a whole thing. Because letters, do you do letters like that? I mean, is that. I do. They're so awesome. It's like so cool. And it's it's wood, you know, pieces of wood, wood stock. It's just, we yeah, love it. It's I amazing. Just, it yeah. She said no. It's I know it was a whole thing. It's so wooden. Yeah, I, we it turned out great though. We it, it, it grew on us. At first, we were like, "Wow, this is you know." You look at it and you're like, "It's Bill Plimpton. It's amazing." But then it's just really. I love. I do like the just kind of minimalism. I love watching uh, <clears throat> this uh, hair mm -hmm. coming down her face, mm -hmm. and this is the only shadow on her body mm -hmm. behind the hair, and she should have a shadow. Boy, I'm getting really detailed here. But you went minimal. Yeah. But the, but see, but the shadow of the, yeah, the shadow of the um, <clears throat> the film film reel, yeah. over, you know, is also the other shadow. Yeah. But it's really cool. And then the shadow of the, this you get put a lot of depth in this, yeah. The ladder, and it was just, and it's also like, you know, we were we were like, oh, okay, are they? Are they just like tree, apple trees that don't have the apples on them yet? Or they're all picked? They're all picked. They're all picked. See, there's that's what we were like. Are the apples all picked? Because, but I like that part. I'm like, oh, there's like a little story there. <laughs> You're like, maybe that I did that on purpose. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it they had an insect invasion. Or, or yeah, maybe they didn't. Maybe because it's organic and they don't spray with chemicals. Yeah, there you go. Well, thank but, you so well, much. Yeah, keep going and tell us about so okay. the film itself. Um, we said it's screening. We had it. I saw. I know it was today. 10:30 tomorrow. Yep, and it was also at 11:30 yeah. yesterday. But 10:30. That's what it is. 10:30 tomorrow. Sogger teas. Don't miss out. 10:30. Yeah, real quickly. Mm -hmm. The plug about the art piece that's going on eBay. Remember that too. Let's yeah. go back to that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know anything about it. I just. Okay. You just know that you. You just. But you know. You know that you are gonna sell we're gonna i believe yeah. we're gonna sell this and have people be able to buy the woodstock film festival po poster on ebay and uh, maybe raise money yeah but she but she didn't mention that to you uh, 
No, she said she was going to uh, auction. Off. Yeah, auction. Yeah, auction it off. But that's gonna be that's gonna be exciting. It's gonna yeah, be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's an I awesome poster. We, we don't know yet, but it's gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. No, but we gotta pick a date. It's kind of like Woodstock, you know. It's like the whole Woodstock Film Festival. There's very like specific things, but then there are things like oh. The filmmakers roundtable at 9 a.m. Whoops, yeah. we did. Did you know about that? I, well, I accidentally I, I showed up at 8:30. Oh, you were there at 8:30. Opened the door and, and it, they said there's a roundtable going on. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Now we know. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of things happening here. Um, but but I, did, I did want to say yeah. one thing that this film slide mm -hmm. is very personal to me mm -hmm. because it takes place in a mountainous area, which is what I came from in Oregon. I live way out in the two leaves as they call it and a lot of logging trucks and so this is a film about a logging camp that is very corrupt it's a little town and then there's a lot of country western music which i listened to as a kid mm -hmm. hank williams oh Patsy yeah hank Klein, williams. that's a Klein. uh johnny cash, johnny you know, cash. a lot of that kind of music classic which i love and i've never seen it with animation before and this is a really cool combination of animation and country old country music. and how and that we're, the new stuff. so we were talking about the how did you get and select the music which is funny because it's been a theme throughout the whole podcast as people talking about i mean i'm going to repeat this but not say the name there was a music cue in one of the i bet it was a featherweight and it was a 10 second music cue of a famous song from the 60s that cost a hundred thousand dollars and I was just curious because that's always something that filmmakers run into at the end. Yeah. They're like, oh, I got to have this Johnny Cash song, but God knows yeah. how much it is. Yeah. How did the, did the music play in a role well, into I, anything I, for I, you since it was so important? Uh, writer, Maureen McKellen. Mm -hmm. You got a composer. Yeah, who I worked with since Your Face. She did the Your Face song. She mm -hmm. sang it and she wrote it. And her and Hank Bones came up with the music. I went down to North Carolina for about a week. Mm -hmm. And we just banged out the music. Mm -hmm. Good. really well, so you did original music, which is a lot easier yeah, than trying to get easy. famous music cues and whatnot. Yeah, you tried it. Every everybody tries it, and then they realize. But I had never heard a ten second cue that was a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I thought that was like the Beatles, maybe, or the Rolling Stone, or Prince, or something. But like that, that I'm not. Even, I can't say the name of the song, but no, that would have been funny. That'd be funny because do they? Is that? I don't know. I mean, some of their songs are so they might have the cue. No, it's a different. I, Steve was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say the name of it, so I'm just not repeating it. But I'm just saying that, you know, you could spend a, a, a lot of money on music. So, But you had an original composer for the film, and so you, it was all country and western. But uh -huh. one musician did all of it. Beautiful. You took care of that. Well, do you think you're going to work on another feature like this? Are you a lot of work? took a lot of late hours, and, you know, I'm a father and a husband and everything. I. I, I, I sacrificed my time with him because oh, I was yeah. drawing. And mm. he said, Dad, when are you going to stop drawing? Mm -hmm. I got to finish this film. Mm -hmm. But once you finish it, it's, it's such a pleasure. I mean, it's you finished it and you could share with the world, but I need five more years before I do my next one. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate it. Um, having a little bit. I'm turning it up because you're you're quiet, and so I had it really loud for myself. But um, but I appreciate, and it's it's a really honor to meet you. I've been working with your poster forever. Please sign it, sign my book, and I'm so happy to finally meet you in person. It's been a lot of Twitter and various things that we send out in the world. So appreciate you. Hi, hi. You want to join us? You can come on this side and just say hi. You want to say hi? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the festival. Are you doing good? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, he drew. He he drew. Oh, you got slide. He gave me slide, and then he signed it, and then he signed my his this is his poster. He signed my poster. Woohoo! Yeah, so tell us about slide. And I'm Katie. Yeah, I don't have my yeah my tattoo. Pretty wild, right? My friend made this. She's a really cool tattoo artist. That's cool. Inspired by nature. Um, let me scoot up here because we just have one microphone. But yeah, tell us a little bit about like putting together this project. Slide. Uh, Bill's been working on it for a long time through COVID and mm -hmm. everything. And um, in your name, I'm, I'm Daniel Knight. Daniel Knight. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and, perfect. And uh, it's literally been getting done a piece at a time because COVID really 
just mm-hmm. stop so much of the momentum and Bill, you know, he's constantly at either festivals or cons or different things. And so there's always stream coming in. And it just yes, wasn't it this time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. I mean, I've known him for so many films. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know his stuff, mm-hmm. but from the tune mm-hmm. years ago, I was a voice in that. Mm-hmm. And, and he he has vision. And when something screws with that, it throws an artist off, mm-hmm. right? A lot so, of people are thrown yeah. off, yeah. Yeah. So um, I went with him to Annecy in, in, uh, in France and just him walking around in the goofy hat. And all these, I, I'd say that besides making the film, the phenomenon of him being the sort of father of indie animation, um, which is funny, it's a quote from Terry Gilliam, he's the father of indie animation, and um, uh, Bill would sit at the merch table and, you know, selling, talking to people, and there's all these kids, the one thing in Annecy is that the French government lets all the kids from all the art schools just come to it. And so there's just scads of kids with, and they're sitting back to back with sketchbooks, just sketching and thinking and everything. And you see that when you sit at the table, that there's like the ones that are closest to where we are, because it's kind of in a snake line, are drawing Bill. And they're kind of quietly, they're just like sketching, looking. And when one of them are done, these are like 17, 19 year olds, and they don't really have a sense of sort of social artistic conversation, but they'll get up very quietly and come over to Bill's table and sort of put the drawing down and back away. And they want him to tell, <laughs> yeah. tell, tell so them what like, did they think about it's it. It's like half gift and half like conversation start. Wow. And it's just oh, beautiful that, that's that the, 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 um, the mode of communication of drawing and showing, like, you know, I thought of like cave drawings practically. It's really a cool so mode deep. of communication. And he never criticizes but he'll look at him and be like oh that's a cool style what you're doing with the blah 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 they're kind of soaking it up and they they, they meekly go away again and you know they'll show up as somebody someday oh. but um he's it's important mm-hmm. to him to have that contact and uh and I, you know he drew something for you mm-hmm. one he of the kids mm-hmm. if they ask he'll just start mm-hmm. drawing and that's his way of mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. back you know mm-hmm. so it's beautiful mm-hmm. it's um I, I yeah, he's he's got just such a spirit, and yeah. you know, it's just continue on. Even even when they shut everything down, it was like you, you, you know, it probably was so hard. But the film got done, and it sounded like it was thirty thousand drawings. Yeah, it sounded like a lot of work. Yeah, and so, exactly. but it's here for us, and we're happy to have you yeah. at the Woodstock Film Festival as always. Thank you. And you know, I hope best of luck with the film yeah. and continue. You think you're going to continue? I was asking Bill. I was like, you know, he's got a fun we have to fundraise when you make your own projects and you you know do all of that you guys gonna work on anything else like what's what's down the pike for you there's one that, a short that he's interested in and it's um it's funny we were talking about kids and communication there's one called uh, whale 52 and uh it's about a kid who's um selectively mute and he's standing um imagine this animated he's standing in front of an aquarium and his his schoolmates are standing elsewhere but they're all together so he's by himself and a big shadow goes across his face and there's a volunteer with a big volunteer button that narrates and says they gave him to me he moved to to, you know new york and didn't uh doesn't know anybody and he just hasn't talked and i don't know what they thought i was going to do with him but there we are i'm just sort of shadowing him And, and the kid uh he He's fascinated by that. He, he, he follows just behind his little group. And then um, you see them. They have a desk in the hall. The kid is out in the hall because they don't know what to do with him in the class. So little by little, they start talking. And the kid writes in a, in a, in a blank book that the guy gives him. Have you ever heard of Whale 52? And he says, no. And he says, and then the narration is, he went on to tell me that scientists have discovered the loneliest whale on the planet because it communicates at 52 megahertz as opposed to every other whale which communicates at 8 megahertz so it can't communicate and the boy just wants to know is he crying oh i just got incredible chills that and he says i i hope not but they start communicating by drawing pictures for each other and finishing each other's pictures much like bill so it spoke to him so i think that's the next thing you have to do that yeah wow And, and at the end of writing they have little quotes in their mm. book and on the last page it says give me the gift of a listening heart king solomon so it's very cool that is so yeah. profound yeah. that is so deep everything that is done and it comes through 
uh, his animation just layers of of magical yeah feelings and just emotions that's beautiful yeah well thank you for sharing that with me that was an amazing way to end this podcast we could go on forever and ever enjoy the rest of the festival thank you so much and that's it for us we are wrapping things up here but we're still going strong at the woodstock film festival we have a lot of films tonight so make sure to check them all out uh we have a ton of films happening I'm just going to read this off in case people are still with us. But we have a few. <clears throat> we have slide um, Saturday at 1030. We were just talking about that. That's at Sauger Cheese in the Orpheum. And then the Monk and the Gun, which I really want to see um, at 1. Defiant is a good one at 345. This is all happening in Sauger Cheese. Invisible Nation, Raisin Liberty Square. And that's just one theater we have six or seven more theaters so go to woodstockfilmfestival.com like this video uh, we'll be archiving it you might be watching it later and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time